Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for August to order. The time is now 9 a.m. Uh, everyone, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. For anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer available at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board through public comment, please do so by coming up to the microphone and clearly stating your name and address uh, and signing in on the sheet to make sure that we properly record your comment. Um, for awareness, a brief executive session was held after the July 28th, 2022 Board of Supervisors meeting to discuss potential litigation. No action is uh, necessary as a result of that. At this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. Okay, seeing none, and um, we have nobody on the Zoom. So uh, we'll move into the main items for discussion. Uh, the first item for discussion is the Act 537 plan. We have our friends from Hydro Terra here this morning as well. Uh, the SEO has started doing inspections in the Northwest districts. Uh, we did receive a letter from Tim Wagner at the DEP requesting an update of the status of the Act 537 plan. Um, I have a draft letter that I'm going to be sending out. I've been pretty much, I'd say, uh, kind of like block diagramming it and moving stuff around to make sure that it flows. The key points that I wanted to hit, and I want your guys, Sue, Jim, Irene, as well as Hydra, Terra, and Alan to give it a look over. Um, but the main points we wanted to hit is we're, we're not sitting idle. We are doing things. Um, we've started the on-lot management program. We got the, uh, the levy added to the tax bill. Um, Allen has started doing the pump outs in the, the first zone, and we've had a good success therein. Uh, next year, zone two starts. The year following, zone three starts. Um, and we're, we're going through the process of getting the income study done, requesting grants, and kind of as a result of some of the preliminary work and the change in cost, the, the almost doubling of the original anticipated cost, um, we're looking at other options, other viable options to help drive that that dollar figure down while still achieving the, the required goal that DEP has for us. Um, once we have what we have ready and kind of packaged up that we want to send it, and we'll send it over to Andy to make sure that there's nothing that he needs to add or change in it. Um, and then I, I think at this point, the next thing that we need to do is we need to talk to our friends from Hydro Terra who are here and... Uh, see where we need to go in terms of income study grants and uh, things like the low pressure system that we talked about at the last workshop meeting. So Joe, very, very, very nice to see you again. I talked to you on the phone the other day, but it's always nice to see you in person. Um, would it be easier if I slide the gooseneck over to, to you two? Yeah. He can, he can pull a chair up if he yeah, wants. Yeah, I was going to say. It's probably yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. There, yeah. yeah. All right, so I usually speak pretty loudly. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, well, it's, oh it's, no, you're it's you're good. It's it's yeah. It's just the air conditioner and the size yeah. of the room, and just so we can get you on the recording too. Last month it was uh, brutal, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, hopefully everybody got a copy of our proposal, mm -hmm. and uh, we Kim and I did release two emails. I think pr prior to that. Uh, so I mean. First of all, just let me thank you for having us back and, and considering our emails and our proposals. We're really uh, excited to you know, be helping you all along this long pathway of uh, public sewer. And um, I just really wanted to ask if there were any questions, first of all, with uh, the two emails that I did release. Uh, one of them had to do with that letter of response back to Pennsylvania DEP. Yeah. Um, I think uh, here in Peter, he sounds like he has a uh, pretty good understanding and outline of the response to DEP makes sense. Um, a lot of times DEP is very willing to relax the rules to make sure that municipalities can move along in the proper direction. Sounds like, um, you know, you, you have a good start on it. Yeah, so I look forward to getting that kind of workshop with them. I'll send it out. We'll send it over to you, get your blessing on it. We'll have Alan take a look at it and then have Andy take a look at it. But I want to make sure that we, because it's been about a month probably since we got that letter from the DEP. I want to make sure we get something back to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
just again so that it doesn't seem like we're we're not doing anything because <laughs> uh we are it's just taking taking a bit um so can i ask who alan and andy are oh so alan madera is our, our seo okay and uh, andy um is the solicitor Sorry. yeah thank you i forgot the, I forgot the words up for a second there uh, uh -huh. so andy um is the township solicitor and his Andy's last name is George. George, okay. yeah. With a G? G, yeah. Just like George. Yeah. Yep. So thanks for, uh, you know, reading that email. Also, um, as we brought up last month, I did really dive into the intermunicipal agreement uh, with Womelsdorf. I did note that there were some areas of concern in there. Um, I don't know if anybody had any questions with regards to that email. Um, but looking at the volume that was considered in that, uh, considered in that intermunicipal agreement and looking at the plans, it appears that there's already flow going into Womelsdorf mm -hmm. from a pretty significant area. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I believe that there were 60,000 gallons per day noted in there. So I'm concerned that with the other area that's going in there, is there going to be enough capacity? So go ahead. Yeah, that was, I had not maybe to the same degree with the math that you, you've gone through, but I had that same concern probably about a year and a half ago, two years. Um, I think it was right around the time that you joined us on the board. So it was about a year ago. Um, where I reached, reached yeah, they, they gave us reassurance. Yeah, I, I reached out to Walmart yeah. and I said, like, I know you've done a lot of stuff, like you've gotten the John F. Martin plant, and there's other yeah. houses that have been built and things like that. Does Walmart store, to, to put it lightly, still even have the capacity to take Marion? And they said, yeah, well, we will have the capacity to take Marion. So um, we can certainly check in with them again. But uh, I, I got a rather pointed statement from. Uh, the gentleman that runs the Womelsdorf Sur Authority, the name escapes me, but I talked to him and Jim McCarthy the one day on the phone, and he was like, "That's there's there's no concern whatsoever okay. therein. Because um, that was where I was at, was do we need to pivot? Do we need to talk to them? Like, are you going to have to make upgrades? Are we going to have to consider doing a, our own little packaged plant here? What's the what's the actual outset of this look like? And they said, like, no, it's, it's we've got, we've got capacity. Okay. So the capacity issue seems to be resolved. Uh, and I guess I had down here Stonecroft Village. I hope that's correct. Yeah, Stonecroft Village is um, on the, the other side of William Penn Boulevard, kind of nestled against uh, Womelstorf. And they've been hooked up since essentially day one. Okay. So if I did the math correctly, 40,000 gallons potentially coming from Stonecroft and uh the, the intermunicipal agreement suggesting that there's 60,000 gallons of capacity in it. just want to make sure you all are covered in that in oh, that yeah. intermunicipal agreement 20,000 yeah. gallons doesn't really go very far so um, wait is that i guess is, it, it, are you saying in addition to because i think they've already accounted for yeah. the capacity from stonecroft it's not it's oh, that, uh, unless uh, joe uh, correct me if i'm wrong are you saying the existing intermunicipal agreement says we get X amount and that's, that's already including Stonecroft. So like if Stonecroft, if, let's say we get 10, Stonecroft yeah. already has three, is seven going to be sufficient for everybody else is yeah. the question. Right. Okay. So I am not, it's not clear in the agreement if Stonecroft is included or okay. not. Okay. Not knowing the conveyance system very well. I, I'm not okay. sure. So that that might, yeah. <laughs> so. That's a, uh, that would be the the second item in my uh, okay because I would have thought that I, I guess I'm, I never make an assumption because it's already pre existing with them. Is that Stonecroft? Yeah, was started like twenty years. Ago. Yeah, is yeah, that in addition I, to or? I would think that it's yeah. probably included in it. Yeah, depending on the date well, of the intermunicipal agreement. Have to clarify. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. Um, it also talks about a tapping fee in there. Uh, I don't know if there's an intention from Walmart store if that every connection in Marion Township is is paying a portion of a tapping fee down there. So I think there needs to be a little clarification on that. You know, okay. if okay. there is a tapping fee included uh, in that 
fee that you're going to pay Wilmersdorf, what is it? Um, so that's certainly one thing of concern. There talks about a fee schedule uh, in that agreement as well. I don't know if we couldn't find a fee schedule online. Uh, we'd be happy to call Wilmersdorf in the future and try and you know work out some of these kinks in the in the intermunicipal agreement, but. Uh, I think that's still something that, that should be resolved. That's in paragraph 4B. In paragraph 4D, the agreement suggests that, that um, Womelsdorf Sewer Authority is authorized to build the township for all residential, commercial, and industrial users uh, in accordance with that same fee schedule. Without having that fee schedule, it seems like it leaves it pretty wide open. Okay. I'll reach out and get get that from somebody. Um, the other thing is is that Wolmsdorf. When I read the intermunicipal agreement, it feels like Wolmsdorf is going to treat Marion Township just like it would. The residents of Wolmelsdorf. Mm. So they're going to char charge you guys the exact same fee for your sewage. But they're not going to maintain your sewer lines. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there's any problems with the sewer lines, that's going to be, would be in addition to the, the township's fees. They'd have to pay that over and above. Um, capital improvements. Not that there's many with uh, a collection system, but if you have a pumping station, we would recommend that uh, capital improvements get factored into that complete fee. And so as I read the agreement, I feel that, I feel that maybe Marion Township should renegotiate that because you're getting treated just like somebody else in within their boundary but you're not getting the same yeah, we're, rights. We're, we're effectively paying for something that we're not utilizing. Exactly. Yeah. No, that, that's a good point. So maybe it would make sense to negotiate a bulk sewer agreement with them. And these are all good questions for your solicitor. Uh, as I understand it, the solicitor represents both parties. Mm -hmm. um, well, his firm does. His yeah, firm, his firm does, yeah. but yeah. So I think just an open conversation would be good. Mm -hmm. And the reason I bring that up even before we go into the proposal that we gave you is that um, this is probably one of the most important things to iron out before you go marching down the road of uh, making the sewer connection. If we spend any money on additional planning or design, chasing after grants, it's good to understand exactly where you're at with that uh, with that agreement. I understand you have a verbal with them, but you know. Well, it's, it's always better to have stuff in writing. Oh yeah, yeah. It's always better to have stuff in writing. So, just as a quick recap, we will be um, talking to Andy, our solicitor, Thursday night. I'll send him an email ahead of this about uh, the intermunicipal agreement, whether or not this does include stone crops from historical use. Um, Clarification around the tapping fee. Uh, if they have anything on file, otherwise I will have to ask Womelsdorf. Uh, the fee schedule from Womelsdorf as well, pursuant to paragraph 4B. And then uh, talking to Andy about that bulk sewer agreement as Womelsdorf is charging us the same fee as the residents. Um, so I think we're in good shape there. Um, like I said, just to, to go back even further, just so that I'm re recapping all the bullet points, I will send you the letter as soon as it makes the rounds, it's most of the way done. Um, Irene, I'm sure you and Sue are going to have some some little things that you add or some, I correct the grammar. some, some yeah. grammar, no. some grammar that you correct and find. <laughs> but um, is a little bit different for us individuals yeah. that are older. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's and that's fine. That's yeah. perfectly fine. But yeah. I want to make sure that we encapsulate the we are doing our best to comply with this. But there's a lot yeah. of things. It's it's a it's a big project to begin with. It's a complex project. We have a lot of opposition from the community. Um, and the fact that the, the price tag on it has doubled has not made it any any easier. Yeah. So that's why. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Um, we just need to, to make sure that we have the right stuff in place, whether it's um, designs, mm -hmm. grants, people helping us get these things done. Because if we try to do this uh, straight organic financing, it's going to be impossible. Like yeah. it's completely, yeah. utterly impossible. Um, Dan. Dump crop footage being considered for as to be pumping. Correct. Correct. So there's a there's an agreement between Marion Township and Wilmersdorf Borough. I'd have to look at what the date was, but specifically about the sewage conveyance. Right. Yeah, we're not we're not looking at billing or anything with yeah. with Stonecroft. It's just if we're if we're I don't want to say contractually, but if we have been obligated to not exceed a certain capacity right. from let's say 20 years ago, and Stonecroft is consuming three out of ten. The point is, we need to make sure that those those remaining seven, and again, fake numbers for the sake of just easy, math. easy math, um, we need to make sure that the remaining seven is actually going to be sufficient for what the project calls for. Otherwise, we would have to redo that inter uh, intermunicipal agreement as well. He's, he's not his company. His company. Is. His company is. It's Another Kozlov solicitor Stout. from Kozlov Stout, yeah. the almost or sewer authority. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. It's not. Yeah. Exactly. It's not it's like Andy's going to sit there and, and give, yeah. so, give himself one of those. Yeah. No. 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 And they have, do that. Uh, right. Yeah. And they have their own. There's a whole set of rules that prevents him from doing that too. So he would be in in trouble with the bar association and i don't think he wants to estate he he, he they know yeah. trust me yeah good it's yeah. it's a it's a, it's a yeah. valid that's concern but yeah i don't yeah. i don't think that's anything yeah. we have to worry about even yeah. if he was for any reason the solicitor for both municipalities chances are they would appoint somebody else to cover the same way yeah. that if andy's out sick we yeah. get courtney here mm -hmm. right. so okay um I think the only question that I had from the, the, I think it was the second email that you had sent um, about uh, like the LSA grant applications, we would need to look further at like the low pressure system because we would need to know wh what we were actually requesting grants for before we actually started requesting grants. Am I, cor am I correct in that? Or so, can we just start asking for grants ahead of time? Okay. I, I see the head nod there. That <laughs> uh you could ask for grants at any time. Okay. So if okay. we would we would recommend that you apply for any and all grants that um, would suit the needs of the township or you would be considered ineligible for, not ineligible, and that, eligible. And el yeah. um, <clears throat> And we've applied for LSA grants in the past. These granting agencies are always looking will always consider a reduction in the price of the project. Okay. So let's say you decided to chase after this LSA grant uh, for the um, gravity sewer and municipal pumping station to Wilmersdorf, and halfway through you realize that maybe a low pressure system is a better, more viable option, with less cost. Our experience is that these funding agencies are always glad to say, okay, that's not a problem. You know, you can take this much money from the grant and apply it to uh, the project. Okay. Do we? So that's never, never been a concern that, uh, in my experience, uh, has been, that's never been an issue that's been a concern, you know, with applying for grants in the past. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's actually a pleasant surprise. I would have assumed it's you need to ask for X and if it's not X anymore, then you've essentially not asked for the right thing. Um, do we want to, and we can do this Thursday night so that it's in the, the more broader public forum, but do we want to authorize HydroTerra to Absolutely. just apply for every yes. possible grant, yes. RUS, PENVEST, yes. ARP, yes. LSA, the whole the whole gambit. Absolutely. And see what so we... first you would need the motion to hire them. Okay. So yeah. I'll... I'll make that motion now. I think that's Absolutely. housekeeping enough. I'd like to make a motion to hire Hydroterra in the capacity of working on the Act 537 project. If we uh, second that, yeah. our proposal does cover um, application of the LSA grant. Okay. Uh, it also covers some other things. 
as you mentioned, Peter, it is a big project. It's a big project for anybody, uh, especially the large for you know Marion Township that has no public sewer. There's a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of things that uh, need to be discovered, and you know there's going to be snakes under some rocks here and there that uh, once we flip them over, you know, mm-hmm. would not be covered under our proposal. Um, but our proposal does cover LSA grant. It covers a uh, a brief review of what the design drawings that you have. And I'd like to walk through the grant or the mm-hmm. proposal if we can. Yeah, please. Um, Kim and I and, and some other folks in our office spent some spent some time understanding your concerns and, and looking through the design and the 537 plan that you had. And we kind of put together a, a little background um, in the PSA. I don't know if you all had a chance to take a look at it, but there were some assumptions that were made in there, uh, and I just really wanted to walk you through, yeah, please walk you through the agreement so you understand what what we're understanding. Um, so in the background, we're basically just indicating. You know that uh, we read through the 537 plan. We understand that the project is to provide public sewerage to phase 1B of the 537 plan. That's Stoutsburg uh, areas along 422, Upper and Lower Canal Road, and Shady Cabins areas. Um, the sewage would then be conveyed into uh, by gravity sewer to a township-owned pumping station in within Marion Township. That pumping station would then uh, take that flow and force it uh, through a low pressure sewer into uh, Wormelsdorf Sewer Authority. And um, I think that's a, essentially where we were with uh, the understanding of the project. We did meet with you all last month. Uh, and then we discovered that this LSA grant was available for uh, for you all to apply for it. Mm-hmm. And it certainly would be appropriate that you all apply for it. Um, and as a matter of fact, we did include that under the scope of services, uh, per, uh, section one, where, uh, you know, we'll go in and, and help you all uh, with a resolution. Kimberly has put together a grant schedule that was included with our packet that uh, she can go over here in just a minute. Um, we would prepare a program budget for that. And what we would do is we would take the information that was submitted to the township in the 537 plan with the updated financing, and we would use that information to apply for this grant. The reason we would do that is because we don't have enough time really to generate our own design and look at the numbers to get it in for us for the LSA grant. It's a very short time period. It's a, basically a month to prepare this. Um, and certainly we could do it in a lot less than a month, but there's going to have to be some coordination between the township and our office to get all these documents together. Uh, there will be a formal resolution that will be required, um, but we think that it's a certainly a doable thing and uh, Kim and I are willing to work, do whatever it takes to get this grant in because we think this is the first and you know biggest step that the township can take in showing DEP that you know you're really serious about providing public sewers. Um, Joe, should we be putting in considering putting in water at the same time? No, we, no. that was not part of the 537 plan. I know it isn't, but um, we're going to dig a hole. Get a little yeah, so then you have the separation issues no. between a, a, a sewer system and a water line. You know, they're going to want 10 feet of separation, so you, they don't put this pipe in the same trench. Well, we're going to have a, somebody digging it anyway. They might as well dig a second one. Well, I mean, that's certainly a good point, um, but that would, uh, we'd have to open up the 537 planning book again to do that. My recommendation is really just to go with the public <clears throat> sewers at this point. Um, well, the reason I asked that is there's a, I've been contacted by a group that would like to come into town and and put some commercial, something like Jim Thorpe, 
on a smaller scale through the city. And I understand from Sue, they have to have water. Well, they have to have public. Um, um, not, not necessarily. It's, um, and I'm speaking from partial knowledge here is it's, it's much like a sewer system. You have to be able to, to have the capacity in the well so that you don't run it dry. Um, with that said, if there is an interest for water, because like I, I personally, I'm not a, a, a big fan of the, the concept, but that doesn't mean we can't do that, especially if we have to essentially open up the street a second time. That could be a separate, smaller project, much like what they did with the gas line down Main Street. And we just bring it into a targeted area. We got water in, in there. That's something that just for the complexity and everything else that's in there might be better served to, to do that specifically in its in its own right. Because I know there are people on Main Street that have approached me about an interest in public water, but then I know there are other people like myself that I, I, I've never had a problem with my well, my well and I, I rather like the well water rather than the municipal water. But um, main point being is we can, we can certainly go down that avenue, but it might serve us to divide up the two projects rather than trying to do them at the same time. Okay. And then you need to consider uh, where is the water coming from. You mm -hmm. could do you could do a private well or public wells in the township, uh, but then you would need to create an, an, an agency like an authority that's going to manage that. Or you could let uh, who is who's, who's serving um, down the next door? Not one, one was there. Yeah. Yeah. Was Jonathan. Yeah. So okay. they they we could get it from Wolmelsdorf in a similar capacity. If they had any, capacity, right? Yeah. But then that would be so if it's an authority, they could come in with a basic agreement. But we've always <clears throat> recommended to all our clients sewer first. first. Sewer first because it's deeper. Uh, it's particularly if you're doing a gravity system. Um, you know, you, everything has to be laid on a grade that you can collect the sewage. Water is easy. You can, you know, pop water up over top of sewer mains or around a utility because it's a pressure line. It's not as hard to install after the fact. I just wondered if while we're doing this, there's any grants available for that with the black weather at the same time and make it part of a project. But yeah, well, I think I, I, if it was digging the same hole, like there would be an economy of scale there. Mm -hmm. But I think whether it's we're applying for the, the extra water grants now or later, it would be Six okay. and one half dozen the other. After the sewers in, mm -hmm. uh, to do the, the main road, the main road, mm -hmm. yeah, the main road. Yeah, this this might be, and this is this is me kind of imagining in the future here if we actually go the route of putting water in let's say along like main street and alongside 422 um it may make sense to do that and then put those roads on the docket that year for resurfacing and then that'll be part of like the that'll be where they sit in the five-year plan for that yeah so because like i said I, i'm sure there's a lot of people that would have interest in it and it would be certainly easier to do it separate and to do it in a like a, a mainline shot, especially if we're getting it from Mobile Store rather than like um, Stonecraft as Aqua. Um, just have it come down 422 and then take a, a dog leg in, like from where the, the black dog entrance of the, the restaurant used to be, or like down Sheridan and over or something. Um, the thing that we, we again have to be cognizant of is there are laws around mandatory hookup that if it passes within a certain distance, then people have to hook up, which some people may like, some people may not like. So I would say let's let's certainly consider, but let's treat it as its own distinct project and give it the attention that it's going to need. Okay, so section one of our scope of services is for the grant application. Again, we'll let Kim go into that a little bit uh, more in detail. Um, we plan on in our proposal uh, to review the, the public sewer concept based on uh, McCarthy engineers and Light Heigl's design. Although there's not much design documents there, uh, it's what you would typically see for an Act 537 plan um, that would be submitted to Pennsylvania DEP. <clears throat> However, that's not sufficient for a build, right? So we're going to have to physically get out there and do some survey. 
What we want to do, though, is come up, spend a day in, in the village here and walk down the entire sewer line, proposed routing, to make sure that it makes sense, <clears throat> to make sure that the design considered getting under, you know, storm culverts or under certain streams, uh, if there's any wetlands out there, just to understand what they base their numbers on. And it would give us a good platform then to spring into a, a complete design for you all. Mm -hmm. So that's included in the proposal. And then um, the last one, uh, section three, really is an update of the funding alternatives. Mm -hmm. And so here's where we would look at any future grants that are coming down the road. Uh, we suspect that uh, the H2O grant will be released in, what did we say, October? September. September. Okay, September, but it's still not pub posted yet. So we really don't know uh, what the format of that grant would look like. And, you know, it would be senseless for us to charge, charge at that grant without seeing the documentation first or the guidelines first. Um, and so that's generally a, a discussion or a description of, of our proposal to uh, to apply for the local shared account grant and review the public sewer concept. And uh, if you have a copy of the proposal, that is all summed up in the compensation on page seven. Okay. Thank you for the overview. Um, I need to you... second that motion. So there's a motion on the table. Yep. yep second. Awesome. Thank you. Um, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. You're hired. Yeah, very good. Well, Thank you very much. Well, welcome aboard. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, so the uh, you've already shared the draft letter of resolution and the packet and everything like that. So the the next step would be uh, we should have Andy review the the draft letter of resolution so that mm -hmm. maybe Thursday night we can yep. sign that. Yep. Um, and then I guess the next thing we need to talk about for uh, the outline thing is the, the matching funds, the ability to fund uh, money against any grants that we get if there is a component that we have to contribute. So um, I'm going to skip ahead on the agenda for just a second and say that when we're doing the budget or looking at the budget, at the yeah, I know it's at the very end, but when we're looking at the budget, we need to build as much of that in as possible yep. because I want to I want to essentially over budget for that yep. if we can. I'd rather have surplus than be short. Yep. So I already built it in my notes. Okay. Um, so, Kim? so yeah, Kimberly uh, is here today to, to kind of go over the submittal schedule because it's such an aggressive uh, mm -hmm. timeline. Uh, we're really going to need to have somebody that would uh, act as a liaison between, you know, the three supervisors, maybe one of the supervisors, or maybe Sue, or maybe both of you, to coordinate with Kim to make sure that we can get the information turned around. And um, once we have it in a draft format, we can get it back to, to the township for your review and then have it in a position that it can be presented um, to LSA by the deadline. And we wanna let Kim sit in this seat uh, and kind of go over that schedule if you all would like to hear it. Oh, absolutely. Just a quick question. Does all the information that they give us, does it always have to go through a meeting for discussion? No. Not discussions, just um, just decisions. The update decisions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, if they send me, if they email me something, I email it to all of you and Andy yeah. and, and our, um, engineer yeah um, it's it's the same thing with us it's not a sunshine law right, violation yes, if we but if, you can't decide yeah so okay. we can share information made right. but if we've already had made the decision they're sharing the information so as long as the decision had been made then if we could just move forward with any progress mm -hmm. okay. i mean you know if you say i'm on board with this jim yeah. says i'm on board with this peter says i'm on board with this i put it on the agenda at the meeting and say you'll make a motion mm -hmm. so there's always that little bit of a delay then with yeah. some things unless we've already previously discussed it or if we have the motion structured in such a way that we're allowing them to move forward subject our approval out of cycle you can do that too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's you, you, you just have to do it a certain way. Right. Yeah. That's the only thing that I'm concerned yeah. about. No, we'll, okay. We'll be able to navigate that. That's okay. that's not a big deal. Oh, a big deal. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Kim, Kim, the floor is yours. 
All right. So it's a pleasure to be up here this morning. I'm excited to talk about the local share account. That's the long form of LSA. It is currently open. And as you can see, it's due September 30th which it's still completely doable. And that's why um, for every grant that we would apply for together, I'm going to create a schedule for us. I have found it is just critical and keeps everybody aware. And, you know, it's so transparent. You know, if we're thinking about, oh, when are these narratives going to be written? I have a deadline here for everybody. So if we commit to working towards this schedule, the last week of submitting a grant is always a little bit stressful for everyone, but um, we won't be running around realizing there's no resolution. We're going to have, if we want to match funds, we'll have that motion ready. And I'll certainly have all the written portions ready. So the general statement about grant preparation, if we're on board, it happens. It always happens. Do you want to yes, I actually just had it and I clicked away from it. Just a second. I'm, and I'm just looking over his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. She, she does go into significant detail. And, um, Thank you. I'm able to look at his shoulder. She's very thorough. But because of the deadline, you really need to make sure you all are available. Absolutely. So um, I have split the schedule into um, certain portions. You'll notice there's a le letter of resolution part of the schedule. There is a motion to match funds part of the schedule if we decide to move forward and option to match funds. Mm -hmm. And then I've also broken it down into explicit application information, um, the exact pieces of information that we need to put together and make sure they're correct. So when I input that, it's 100% and ready to go. Mm -hmm. And finally, I have an application narrative portion. I've broken it down so that we can basically check things off as we go. I have the letter of resolution first. That's absolutely paramount. We cannot submit an application without the township resolving to apply. I have written out and included a draft letter of resolution according to the standards of the Commonwealth Financing Authority. You can also reference um, their suggested letter of resolution online, um, but that is available for you to view. It's, 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 it's yeah. very basic. Yeah, yeah. it's in plain I, English as it can be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have any reservations yeah. at that that will Excellent. Be on Thursday night. Um, the biggest thing with the deadlines is we have to make sure that that is approved by the final public meeting available before mm -hmm. before submission. Submission is September 30th. I have guided everything to coordinate with that September 30th. And I, I want it to be, honestly, if we can get it in ahead of the deadline, yeah. I'm happier. Everybody's happier. Yeah. Um, so we want to move this accurately, but also swiftly. So we'll be double checking, um, but keeping it online. You'll see the 23rd, ideally, we'll have finished our review. And in the best case scenario, it'll absolutely be accepted by the 24th of September. Um, so that's the resolution part. The motion to match funds, I know you're going to have future conversation about that. What is wonderful about optioning to match funds is that for the most part, I found they take your project a little bit more seriously. They know you're committed. So if the township presents um, some type of match in any percentage capacity, it just shows you are willing to contribute. It's something that you're dedicated to. That's the value of optioning. And now with this grant, the LSA grant, there's no minimum match which is nice because it is optional. So you could choose to match what you're comfortable with. Some other grants in the future sometimes require 50% match. Again, LSA is really fantastic. And that's why I'm also excited to present that because yeah. there's just a lot of opportunity here if we take it. Yeah. The one one thing just to insert here for a second is that we need to be very diligent about the matching component of it because even like if we're looking at a 10 million dollar price tag one percent is a hundred thousand dollars so we need to be very careful that we don't over leverage ourselves yes. and say we're going to commit to 20 percent of 10 million dollars yep. and then be like you can't. we don't have we don't have the money to do yep. that um but yeah ab absolutely so it's we'll figure out how that fits in there and uh certainly match that in some some component 
Excellent. Um, and so the scans of those signed documents must be sent to me again ahead of that September 30th deadline because I will have to scan that into their system as um, an exhibit or addenda as they call it. So I'm going to move to the application information. And I think the most important here is if we can today decide who would like to communicate with me on a weekly or likely daily basis as we get up to submitting this. That way, you know, we get the ball rolling very quickly. So it's, it's probably going to be tough for me with my work schedule to do that kind of frequency. I, Irene or, or Jim or either one of you, like Jim, for example, are you able to take the baton on that one? Be, be the point. Okay. So Great. Jim, Jim will be our, our point person. Sue is involved in every little thing we do. So um, if, if you can, <laughs> Sue, you're going to get a lot of carbon if, copied if, emails. Yeah. You really need to hire somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I just meant like you'll you'll be in in the loop that way. If Jim is indisposed for something, you'll be able to yeah. Kind of fill and we're all, we're always all available. Yeah. You could always, right. I'll, I'll hand you my number too. Of course, you could always give me a call as well. I wouldn't mind being you know in in addition to. I just I have a wacky schedule. Yeah. I never have the same yeah. schedule every week. So. Yeah, and, and, and all seriousness, like the, you said yeah. about the, a lot of carbon copy emails, put all of us yeah, on we'll it. Do. Um, yeah, we'll do. We have a, a distribution list that we use. It's uh, supervisors at marionTWP.com. It goes to each of us. Like it, you send that to that one address mm -hmm. and we all get it. So um, make use of that. That'll make your life easier and we'll all be in the know. Jim yeah. will work with you directly. But if, to Irene's point, if he's on vacation or whatever, yeah. Um, not feeling well that day doesn't matter. We'll be able to to pick up where yeah. you left off. Most excellent. Yeah. I think we all try to keep track of all the information. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, great. Um, if we jump back to the application information schedule, I have gone ahead and included all the information that I will need from you up front. Um, I've dedicated, I would be more than happy to come down here and spend some time in the morning about, you know, I've allocated about four hours for some information fact finding. If we want to sit down and knock it all out together and I just bring, you know, a typewritten copy back to the office or we email it together, that's an option. Or we can just, you know, you could email it from the comfort yeah. of the office. But um, having all this information, it's, it's all right here. So we could basically get the ball rolling starting Monday, really, yeah. and get all of it together. So Jim, you'll be getting emails from me about, you know, yeah. it, to confirm the entity name, code, and all yeah, that. Yeah, I have all that information. Yeah. So you're still going to need to work closely with me anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. We, we don't seven, have, seven and eight, we yeah. can get used. Yeah. We don't, the only thing that we don't have on there is an NAICS number. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's per, like critical or it, not. It's not critical. Okay. Um, yeah, when we applied for any SAM.gov stuff, would that have been included? Because I don't yes. know. Yes. Then, then I probably, yeah, have then I have it in the file. It's probably yeah. written on the inside of the file folder. Yeah, anything yeah. you have related to SAM, yeah, all of that information will yeah. be perfect. And then just scrolling through like the sustainable Pennsylvania, I don't think that we have. You're not on the listing, but yeah. I wanted to confirm. Everything yeah. Is in the desk. Uh, Everything's the designated area confirmation, confirmation, is, confirmation to my knowledge we don't have act five uh, 47 brownfield enterprise zone like none of those okay. are, are applicable you're going to be able to um, pull up the information like that and then and through the course of sending over seven and eight we'll send over the the designated signees okay great everything else um, realistically it'll probably be me for I'll, I'll get number you all the numbers and work together um, but everything that I've tried, I try to make 13, it as simple as possible that we understand the system he could pick up on it but anyone could you know we'll get it and then we'll have to yeah. work together on the written narrative so yeah. portion of it but yeah we can we, we can, can get you that information very quickly on. that's fantastic yeah. that's yeah. a huge portion of it is just making sure we have the i's dotted and t's, t's crossed yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely so we should be able to get seven and eight and i just i went through yeah. the rest of these real quick that like we don't we don't have yeah. that we don't have any of these yeah and we'll just we'll put me as the signatory on any of the things that have to be signed sure Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And then the final um, portion is the biggest is the application narrative. Yeah. Um, I will be speaking likely, especially Peter, if we want to sit down and think about some of the history, the township, your goals. Um, again, I have about four hours for that fact finding and initial discussion put aside. Um, she knows everything about the town. Yeah. <laughs> Sue's the one that could give you probably. Yeah. That, yeah. Based, based on the aggressive yeah. timetable for that, that might be 
best suited rather than waiting for like a workshop or trying to schedule a special session to come in and talk to Sue and like maybe Irene or Jim yeah. get connected yeah. outside of a meeting Absolutely. to be able to get that history. Because there, there is actually in the first uh, main section of the Act 537, there is a little bit of history about the project and how it was started and then stopped. And they did some surveying along uh, Canal and Shady Cabin that eh, would probably be beneficial, but it's just not cost effective to do it. There's some dates and history in there, but I'm sure between Sue um, having a lot of the, the more, uh, I'll say, like tribal, tribal get, knowledge of the community. If I can get my husband to come here too, that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we can we can certainly work on that. But again, just because of the time yes. component, we don't want to wait until a meeting. We either need to schedule okay. something or wonderful. just get you connected to one yeah. or the other of us. I'm I'm right here in Berks County myself. Okay. I live right uh almost across from Christmas Village. Okay. So it's it's okay. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So you just come over for coffee one more. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be glad to. Yeah. The the narrative is we have some limits. So it's split. The application has four questions that we have to respond to specifically. And they have a thousand characters, which each are total. Each, okay. thankfully. Okay. But it, it's still a little bit slim pickings, which is why meeting together and I I specialize in editing and writing this so hearing your input right we're going to be able to boil it down and really make it compelling mm -hmm. my goal is it's not just to say what this project is we have to let them know the meaning of it why it's going to be beneficial to receive this funding um, and that's where we get the greatest success so we we I work very hard to make sure it's an accurate reflection of the township and that we are in the best position to you know show the representatives who are reading this why it matters and how we're going to use this funding well. Joe is exceptional at putting together the budget, the narrative, and we're going to be, you know, in the office. We're always talking together and collaborating on this. We have project narrative and budget narrative. The budget narrative is unlimited. So every item that we identify, I sit down with Joe and we work through and we come up with the compelling narrative to explain why is it necessary to dedicate this portion of the budget to getting pipe, for example? So we sit down and we spend, you know, the good hard time getting that together. And once we have our draft together, we present it to you. You always have the option for commentary. And my request is, again, with time being of the essence to submit to such, you know, this is a pretty strong opportunity. I ask that you review it fairly quickly if we can commit to the turnaround so that I can final edit. Do we have the questions for the narratives? Yes, I can submit those okay. to you. Yeah, if you can send them to us, we can bump them around even in advance of you meeting with Sue Great. or Jim or Irene or myself um, and get some of that information in. Because like I just I, just for academics here, pulled up the, the census data for Marion. And I think one of the things that we'd want to focus on is the fact that, uh, granted, the, the affected area is a small portion of the township that we're looking at it. But per census data, 34% of our township is above the age of 60. So there are a lot of people who are older and are on fixed incomes. And I think that would be a good thing to highlight. And the grant request is it's it's gonna be a difficult uh, thing to fund as is because of the large cost. But on top of that, we have a low population and within that low population, a lot of them are retirement age or, or beyond. So- The most excellent. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Tim pointed out, you know, Grant goes to say that mm -hmm. technical portion of the narrative is not to be wrong, but I am not a writer. That's where Brittany comes in. She could have had wrong stuff on the media and uh, statement. And, you know, the people that are reviewing these things are not engineers either. There are mm -hmm. people that maybe are appointed as volunteers at the county level. And they're reviewing it, so they want to meet something that's got a little juice to it that you know covers the heartstrings a little bit and says, you know, Mary not really needs this money because of you know the history and you know what they've been through in the past. And uh, I think that's why it's really important that we understand the history and concern, and then we can go ahead with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, questions for the LSA grant 
you want that to go to the joint emails. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. And then if you would also put on the just the regular Marion Township email so, that okay. you, you use that goes to Sue. That way we all get it. And if if you forget them, I, I send them everything. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For any reason we're we're not on CC or something yeah. like that, Sue is very good about making yeah. sure we get it. So Excellent. Except they don't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sue Sue keeps us busy. Sue is busy and Sue Obviously, keeps us busy. Read this, but here, they're gonna get it, get yeah. it anyway. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, those were, I think, the biggest things. And then getting that grant submission, I always send you the full electronic receipt. Okay. Um, so so it, your goal essentially is to have this all prepared so we can, we can actually motion at the, next yeah. at the September 29th meeting because it's got to be submitted the yeah. 30th. Correct? Absolutely. I, I, and if we could fix, I, if I we could do this before. I'd actually go so far as to say, let's let's have it ready for the workshop meeting on the 24th okay, so yeah, that we can get, they can get it in on the yeah. 26th yeah. and okay. go yeah. from there. Um, Completely my, doable. My next question is the, the proposal covers like the LSA and everything like that. And we probably want to get out of the woods on this one mm -hmm. first, but um, I know I have a strong interest and I think Irene and Jim, you share that is getting you guys to submit the other stuff like ARP, mm -hmm. um, RUS, PENVES, um, really kind of like I said, run the gambit of here's all the, the grant funding sources that we can get. Cause I, I think we're gonna have to really cast a wide net on this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so go the whole ocean. Yeah. 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 Well, this is the yeah. absolute best time to be going after this while the funds are available. Um, again, we're just waiting on the details. Um, truly, I've been going through, and I do sometimes daily updates, going through all the listservs and checking the main websites. When are they going to actually give the parameters to apply for all the, you know, infusion of infrastructure funds the Biden administration has given? And they're they're still trying to figure it out themselves. Yep. Um, so once that information becomes available, I'm going to put a memo together for everyone. I'll send it to the emails. So I'll say, hey, you know what? I think we are an eligible project for hopefully the PAH2O. Let's let's get this schedule together with your blessing. I'll put the schedule and we can just hop on it. Very good. Can we ask that probably that's in section three of our approval uh, to put some time aside not prepare a grant, but we we'll send you all a memo of here's what the grant is, here's what it will cover, here's what it will not cover, and your eligibility. Yeah. And then if we all like it and it seems a good fit, then we can either do it as time and material based on our uh, schedule rates or we need to be glad to give you all another. Yeah. And actually, Joe, I think it'd probably be beneficial for you to take this seat if you wanted to discuss further. Yeah, you know, I think yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's absolutely. I yeah. I would say in my proposal. Um, the only other thing is we did share with you all our schedule of rates in 1.2, and uh, there's going to be some issues where we need to consider it in a proposal someplace, and rather than you know, stalling, we'd like to continue to help you all and feel like our rates are acceptable, uh, you know, we we'll try to help you as much as we can. I don't have any problem with yeah. the rates. Yeah, and I'm assuming you've created a new file for all this information. Yep. Thank yeah. you, Sue. Okay. Yeah. Can I can I ask a couple mm, of questions? Please. Absolutely. So I, I don't recall if I asked at the last meeting or maybe I think I was just overwhelmed. How have you worked with other townships and municipalities that have been in, in a similar predicament or maybe even worse? Or are we the worst case? Uh, so I, I, don't, I, I don't know if there's worse, but yeah. So I can tell you that we have not worked with anybody that's been in a worse situation. Okay. <laughs> uh, but we've, uh, I've been involved with the township now for, I guess, 20, 20 plus years. They originally had no public sewer, and it was a different situation, a lot of development pressure coming in. Uh, but we were able to uh, we were able to convince the developers to build a state of the art facility that has uh, a treatment plant that has drip disposal, so it's groundwater recharge rather than stream discharge. 
the home once the receiver is already in the screen gets charged, so uh, then the creek goes into the target of the Hawkins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been definitely been through every single process along the way. Okay. We've been involved with Act 537 planning uh, for a number of townships. I worked in, in Norristown Borough as the sewer authority engineer who developed the 537 plan down there. Now they already had a sewer system. Mm -hmm. But I've uh, done that for them in Bridgeport, Pennsylvania. I've uh, done some 537 planning in Chester County. Uh, and then engineering, we, we certainly have done a number of pumping stations and gravity systems. And so we really are able to take you through you know, the planning all the way to the end of the construction. Mm -hmm. and that's why I brought up uh, my concerns with the agreement mm -hmm. because. Sometimes agreements get made and then things change along the way. Mm -hmm. And then somebody is uh, outside or takes exception. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize that was covered. So it's really best just to open that up and say, are we both on the same page here? Gotcha. So it's clear. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, I'm an engineer. I've been doing this for 30 years. Kimberly is our grant, grant writing person. And she's got plenty of experience doing this. Uh, I am not a grant writing person, although I can help with all the technical end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an engineer. And that's mm -hmm. wastewater is what I've been doing. For the, no, uh, so our, our our situation doesn't seem dismal, but okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, know, it requires sure work. Right, the problems. problems. Right, right, right. There's going to be some. There's, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, and there might. The more we talk about this 537 plan and moving forward with public sewers, I'm sure that the folks behind me will increase in numbers, right? Because mm -hmm. most, yeah, yeah. Most so, assured. so that that leads to my my next question. And we sometimes have an angry mob in here. And if you could give us any suggestions or any advice, when we have a lot of people that just want us to frankly pull the plan, and we understand from a legal standpoint that's not sound. Um, we understand that we would be fined $300 a day for every day that we did not have a plan in place. And of course, the cost of uh, doing a new plan, et cetera, like everything, it, it would take what, a year and a half at least to, to come up with something new. And we, can't, we couldn't even afford $300 a day fine throughout that time frame. So do you have any advice as to how we can deal with people who are angry with this being implemented? So... Um... I've been involved with some very nasty 537 plans in over the course of 20 years. And you guys have the, the worst, but yet the best thing to fall back on. And that is blaming the big brother. Mm -hmm. The EP issued a consent order. We have no option. And $300 a day, by the way, is the minimum. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the minimum. Yeah. It goes way up from there. So, Although it doesn't seem like a lot. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. It that is, that adds up. That yeah. adds up very quickly. Yeah. It's $9,000 a month. Yeah. yeah. Month. yeah. 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 And even if they're telling you, ah, uh, you know, that's just something we put on paper. They can no, still they do it. it on paper that they're not going to hit you with that. They yeah. can still do it. They can still do yeah. it. Yeah. So the 537 uh, consent order is absolutely where you want to be. It's not your decision, unfortunately. Yeah. You submitted the 537 plan. You had compelling information to suggest that many of the townships didn't want to go in that direction, but then you had some compelling information that suggested it was the best thing. Right. The EP recognized it as the best thing, and they heard a lot of other complaints, I'm sure, from community people in support of or not in support of. They made the decision, they issued. Uh, approval of your 537 plan, and then they issue the consent order. Mm -hmm. So, a consent order is not something to mess around with. I've seen consent orders $500,000 in, in Norristown, it was a million dollar uh, issuance 15 years ago with yeah. combined sewers. So, consent orders are nothing to mess around with. Yeah, they, yeah I can't I'm, even fathom that. So that's where I would hang my hat. And, and yeah. if I'm in here in front of an angry mob, it's not it's not your fault. It's not right. my fault. It's not Kimberly. It's the, the, the that's who's forcing us to do this. 
I think in the next couple of months, it might not be a bad idea to have, once we have a little more solidification around like the LSA grant and some of the other grant applications to have, like we had had a while ago, a, a town hall. Unfortunately, we can't rent the fire hall, so it might have to be a little cozy in here. Uh, but to have... You possibly could rent it. But, I mean, that's true. That, that's actually true. But uh, um, having some form where we can put up in, in large that like, okay, here's here's the State of the Union. Here's the facts. We're under the consent order. that The, uh, the plan was submitted by the prior board. Um, we're submitting for all of these grants because we need to make sure that it's affordable. We're we're on on the hook. We're on the dotted line for this, and we're we're chasing this as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I I fully anticipate some people being upset about this and wanting to pull the plan, as mm -hmm. Irene said. But yeah, we have to do our our best to try yeah. to relay to people that like that's yeah. that's not really an option anymore. Our hands are tied on this by the nature of how this whole situation played out. So I'm just tired of getting yelled at for something that I'm trying to do the best with. Yeah. 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 And and like any of the other times, like we've had things where it got a little unruly, but we, we just have to reinforce that this is a public meeting. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to be civil mm -hmm. and that goes for both sides mm -hmm. of the table. Mm -hmm. And if it degrades beyond that, we will simply adjourn the meeting. This is something we want to do exactly. for you as a community. We want to make sure that information is relayed, that you understand what's going on and you have an opportunity for your voice to be heard. But you can make a public comment without being derogatory or screaming or yelling or anything like that. So we're going to, we're going to be calm and polite and we expect the same in return. So we'll have to work on setting that up just so that we start to get that, that communication stream going again. Okay. But I think you also just uh, sharing with the residents that you're chasing many grants to try and bring this mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. really, I don't know what else you can do. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. that might be helpful for from a visual standpoint because it's one thing to rattle yeah. it off. But if we have like, if I put something together on like a PowerPoint that says like we're chasing these grants and like this one we could get up to this amount or we could get up to this amount. Like if it's a, I don't know, it, I'll just make up an imaginary number that this grant will fund potentially up to forty percent of that. It could be this amount and like just say like with the combination we're chasing all of these grants. We're hoping to get it down to x dollars which then translates to this over a 20-year span per household or this amount per month having something that people can actually see and digest right. a little better is is going to be i think more approachable rather yeah. than oh, we're trying to get grants so, right right and i guess we're never going to win over the people that just like to oh buy. yeah there, there are some yeah. people who have made up their mind yeah. no matter what you do but yeah. for everybody else i think it would be beneficial to show yeah. that like yes we are trying and here's we, again, you don't want to boil the ocean and go into too many technical details because people aren't engineers or CPAs or anything like that. But just to show like, these are all the things, this is what it actually translates to. And and this is what kind of the bottom line would be if we can actually get the kind of funding that we think we need. So. So look great on your resume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you see what we had to do for this thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It develops thick skin sometimes yeah, when you're in the yeah. business. Well, you know, like like I like I said to Peter before, you don't know the question to ask if you don't know what mm -hmm. to ask. Yeah. And so, you know, just I have to rely on your expertise and your field to to help guide us through this whole situation. Um, and so, you know, I appreciate we appreciate your input and we certainly appreciate your time being here today. Well, and I feel very, very comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. 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 Well, and, I think, you know, I think we found the right people. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I must say, it's been a pleasure talking to you on the phone yeah. over the past couple of months, Joe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we can, we can certainly navigate you all through this. Um, I'm not going to say we might not get beat up along the way, but we'll get to it. Yeah. I could buy alcohol, don't worry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bring little bottles, slip them under the table. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad we have a yeah. grant writer doing this instead of an engineer. Yeah. 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 Trust me, we've been blessed to have her in the office. Get a bunch of engineers in there writing down what they think is certainly easy to read and then somebody that isn't an engineer going, yeah. what? what is that? Yeah. Speak yeah. my language, right? <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? No. Sir, thank you. No, thank you thank both you. for being thank here. We'll, we'll be in close contact over the next yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. So what Have do I good need to put on Thursday night's agenda? The, the resolution. Uh, resolution. And that resolution would still be blank with the moment. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it would be it would be silent on the uh, managing funds at that point. Yeah. Yeah. But then if you decided to add the matching funds in, we do a slight re uh, revision to that resolution to put a document in your uh, September award. Yeah. Yeah, because we got to figure out where it fits into the budget for, mm -hmm. for next year. And I haven't even begun to start crunching the numbers on that yet. So okay. every play a pencil in September, we'll come back to another month and see all on Sunday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, I think in the proposal I may have skipped over it, but in reviewing the conceptual design, um, I would like to come into the office and, and earmark anything that I think would be important. Sit down with Sue for a couple hours and earmark anything that I think is important and ask her to scan it and then send it to me. If you would be comfortable and Certainly, if you're not comfortable, this is perfectly fine because many boards are not. But if you would be comfortable and I signed a release of those documents, if I could take them to my office, yeah. I could sign, yeah. I could, Kim could scan yeah. the appropriate documents, probably wind up saving some money in the long run. And then she could just bring that whole folder back uh, afterwards. Because if there's plans in there, we have a good size scanner. So we don't yeah. 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 Do you have any problems with that? Well, I sent you that PDF that I um, yes. like Heidel gave me. And it, it you had two extra cardboard um boxes full of documents. Yeah. And um yeah. I'm not the keen engineer eye that okay. Jeff has. Yep, got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're just looking for anything and everything to try and save your yeah. money. Yeah. Not to see anything yeah. over yeah. everything. Like I just already yeah. flushed it. Right. <clears throat> Because you guys are okay with that. Uh, yep. And yeah. see if you think you can get that together Monday or Tuesday or if it's available now, we'll take it back. I can get them out now. Or Yeah, grab them. Yeah, grab them. Is it open? Uh, I didn't open it. Yeah, okay. Do you need some help, Sue? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be okay. Sorry. If we're uh, grabbing boxes, I'm going to take a brief moment to hit the restroom, so I'll be right back. There was a good one. Wow. He helped too. I so on this discussion the lights is on here too today if you want to there's a discussion of lighting everything and doing the that's on here yeah good Um, they don't have an SEO in their staff, and for what it's worth, McCarthy didn't build the design for that. All they did was complete plan for submission. The design was by Ice. 
I did ask him for if they had a design drawing, yeah. and he said no, we were never. Yeah, and that's that. that's my understanding of that is they they were brought in to finish the stuff in like 2014. They, so what Kimberly? It's only a conceptual design what okay. Lyra Michael put together. Yeah. So unfortunately, that's not going to take you to the finish line. Yeah, and Joe is really going to seriously put it off. Yeah, there's a little pressure. With it. Yeah, but for grant purposes yeah. at the time, you can. We can use yeah. that, but yeah, I, I, I mean, Light Hydro was very um, willing to scan. They actually came and picked up the paper document mm -hmm. and took it back to their office and scanned it, and scanned the big, the big copy of thing, it. Okay. Uh, and with no question to ask. Um, well, good, good. So, um, yeah. Good. It's ordered that we each scan and we'll send you guys like on the Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One of the things that we've been chipping away at slowly, and we have a, an item on here about hiring some additional help, is um, we're trying to get everything digitized. Mm -hmm. We want to get to a point where all of our paper filing exists in digital format as well. The way if we need to send stuff out for this sort of thing or anything else, that we can just simply either put it up on a file share that you guys have access to or send it to you an email or put it on a thumb drive or whatever. I'd but, like it if you could put it on a separate drive. This way, yeah. like, if, I mean, well, well, like even on the, all these particular documents on a drive, this way we can kind of keep track of them. Yeah. It's a little bit easier for me. Are you able to do that? So long-term, yes. Yeah, Short-term, okay. what we can do is we can put a folder on the, the Google drive. Okay. We just have to, I need to move the videos off because they take up a lot yep, of space, perfect. but you you can set up remote access into the file server here and then have individual accounts yeah on that. i'm good with just a folder in the google drive yeah if you put everything that's, into the folder in the google drive i'm gonna click on that folder and make sure I've, I've read through all the documents yeah that's that's the quickest easiest solution like i said the other one's a little more specific but um we can just start putting stuff in the professional services okay folder and i'll okay. just make a um uh, we'll like, uh, consultants like Hydroterra folder, and that we'll get access great. to our friends at Hydroterra, yeah. and we'll have access to it obviously because we're we're the owners on the Google Drive, and we can collaboratively put stuff in and out of there in terms of schedules, project materials, forms, um, anything like that. We can kind of keep things moving quickly and not have to rely on on email, which can be. Um, it's cumbersome because yeah. you're like sifting through, sifting well, through. Not to yeah. mention sometimes yeah. it's, it's, there's a lot of attachments or large attachments. You can have issues with even sending the email. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so send anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so that's the only service that really yeah. people have other than some people have like Verizon or some of the other smaller telcos for DSL. But yeah, it's, it, that's pretty much it. So that yeah, the Google. I used to be able to send like a hundred pages and now I can't even send 25. It, it it's, just won't let me do it. It's it's file size, so yeah. that's why I was I was saying we should try doing like the scan as like the small PDF, the shrunk PDF, because I mean, it, already, I've already yeah. yeah I've already even compressed it yeah because I could do that with the HP printer mm -hmm. and it still won't let me send it yeah it, yeah that's sort of part of program I know like yeah like I said the Nomadesk and somebody else just um. Like high goal did Dropbox. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I like I like the Google Drive because we have a lot of the other stuff up on the Google Drive. Yeah. So I would just make you guys a folder. If you, like if your if your emails don't have a, a Google account association, that would be the only be the only no, thing you'd have. You okay, good. Um, otherwise, we'll just get you guys set up for that, and we'll all have access to it and be able to. Same stuff. Yeah. It's nice to have some on the board. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I'm like, keep, keep Peter, how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'll make sure that we keep a readily available line of communication open for, for sharing documents. And like I said, if you need something, email or call or reach out to Jim. Um, Jim, if they don't already have your, your phone number, um, I'll make sure that they, they get that. Um, Okay, but there's nothing else. Thank you both for being here. We really appreciate the help and look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, just let me know what you need to show me how to use my email account better yeah. and what I do. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Well, do you want this back? Do you want uh, yeah. Let's... I emailed it to them and they yeah. just don't have it here today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What the uh, the proposal? Yeah, I had it up in front of me the whole time. Okay. I was sharing. Yeah, it's on Google Drive. No. Yeah, no, we're good. Um.
Wednesday. Wednesday's not good. I have to I have to I have to get the agenda done before I leave. So no. Tuesday. This is my crunch week because I have a meeting. We have a meeting on Thursday, and I get to try to type the minutes and then do the agenda. And um, what well, would well, yeah, I'd, I'd hate to wait that long, but would um, is there is there anything that you have to have done before the board meeting? Thursday night, meeting. other than the resolution, which is going to already vote. What about would Friday work better? So it would, unless yeah. I, I'm serious. If you want to come to my house, you can come to my house. The well, no, I'm working. Yeah. You, do you want to come this weekend? Cool. That's fine. Yeah. Want to come today? <laughs> <laughs> today, I'm working on the family get together. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. My grandfather's putting on for years. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so, it, um, tell him, real tell him happy birthday. Yeah. Wow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow afternoon? Wow. I don't have access to stuff here, but I can tell you history. Okay. I'm scribbling. Give me my house phone or cell phone. My address. Yeah. Do you want my social security? Do <laughs> 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 you have my first board? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you all for have a good weekend. Sure. Appreciate the opportunity to work with you all. It's a great Saturday. You too. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Yes, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. No, no, no pressure. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you ready to move on to the next okay. one? Okay. Next item on the agenda. We we effectively went through numbers one and two. So the third one is 19 Main Street, the septic system. Uh, our SEO Allen investigated a complaint about overflow of sewage and issued a notice of violation. He met with the owner. This property is half of a semi-detached home with a lot size of 0.16 acres for 19 Main and a lot size of 0.17 acres for 17 Main. Uh, both have a well in the rear rear yard and an outhouse, or what was a privy in the past, repurposed as a cesspool. 19 Main is only 19 feet wide with a house in the front of lots, a garage in the back, and a privacy fence on either side. Um, because of this, a new septic system is completely out of the question. It's impossible to put uh, a system like that in such a, a small area. A holding tank may meet the regulations. However, uh, Alan is pretty sure they would not have the accessibility to be able to, to dig a hole in the yard, pile the dirt, bring in the holding tank, etc. Um, there are five people in the house presently, but two of them are going away to college, which would greatly reduce the, the waste contribution. The suggestion is that they effectively treat the existing system as a uh, temporary holding tank and pump it monthly rather than every two to three years and require uh, an annual inspection. This is ultimately going to be less expensive for them than installing a holding tank. Uh, it would fall under the, the purview of best technical guidance as it exists within the, uh, the regulations and uh, would essentially be a, a stopgap for them until uh, a time that they hooked up to public sewer. Um, based on Alan's recommendation and the not putting a, an overly large burden on a homeowner, I would be inclined to approve this personally. Yeah, there's not any real option. Yeah, I, yeah. I would say let's, let's go and actually approve this on Thursday night, keep yep. it on the agenda. Okay. But I, I, for the sake of the homeowner, I'm you're okay to... with 
don't think this month will. They're, they there's, they no don't, other there's no other option. There's Everything, no other everything's choice. going into the yard. It's gonna otherwise, get, it's going to get expensive. It is, but right. it, think about it this way: it's it's going to be costly to do it this way, but it's going to be even more costly because of the site specifics of it. If they wanted to put a holding tank in, it's usually between that one. Three and five thousand put in a whole bag. They try to put in the biggest, which is like a five thousand. Yeah. But even so, if they have seven people potentially living in the house, yeah. I mean, they could they, they could be pumping on monthly anyway. Weekly, maybe, yeah. Depending yeah. on how much water they use. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I just, I just I, put on the agenda because he wants your recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. My, my the point I was driving towards is um, it may actually be even more money for them to try and excavate it because of the small yeah. size. Right. right. And then other things I, I don't disagree. I just feel yeah. feel awful for them that they're going to have to pump that thing in the month of Right, but now they're just pumping it into the yard and it's flowing over into their yeah. neighbor's yard. And their neighbors had yeah. multiple complaints over the past several years. So we're addressing yeah. at least part of the issue that you have to be responsible for your own poop. Yeah, so, and, it, and it really is an yeah. un unfortunate thing. But based yeah. on the problem, there's a limited number of solutions, and this yeah. this is probably going to be the yeah, least this painful. Is the, this yeah. is the least painful. Yeah, yeah. Still painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. we'll keep, keep that I'm on the fine. keep I'm that on the agenda. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it a little more first, <laughs> and, and then go through the motion. Um, next item on the agenda is the CWPLD 37 Main Street self storage units. The final plan submission was reviewed by the Planning Commission at their August 16th meeting, and they recommended that the board grant conditional approval of the final plan based on McCarthy Engineering's review letter dated on August 11th, 2022. So if you looked at this, there's still a few things they have to do, and the NPDES permit has not been issued yet. So there's still some things not completed. Okay. Um, but... I don't think it'll come in between now and the board meeting on Thursday, but we'll, we'll wait no, on... We'll wait. We'll wait on that one too, but I conditionally, assuming they get the NPDS and everything else, I, I, again, that's I, I don't think we're going to have any strong objections or tangible objections to that that would actually hold water. So uh, next is the Jeremy Troutman Poultry Operation Letter of Credit Reduction. Based on an inspection done by McCarthy Engineering on August 10th, they recommended a reduction of the letter of credit in an amount of $92,295.49. A uh, letter of credit amount with auto increases is one hundred eighty-six thousand six hundred and forty-six dollars and forty-one cents. Uh, minus that ninety-two thousand gives the amount to be retained at ninety-four thousand three hundred and fifty dollars and ninety-two cents. So, um, this is a basic housekeeping item in my mind. I'm gonna make. They didn't. They didn't out of the it's well, that's it that's doesn't matter what they completed. It, McCarthy has yeah. signed off, and that's on that's why there's still a letter of credit reduced. Yeah, that's why there's still a retained amount of ninety four thousand. So I'll make a motion to authorize the reduction of the letter of credit in the amount of ninety two thousand two hundred ninety five dollars and forty nine cents. Is it? Is there a second? A second. Sorry. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Thank you. Uh, I, Irene. Aye. Jen. Aye. Okay. Next is the Marion Township Municipal Action Plan. This is required by the Berks County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Uh, they would like us to review, update, and return by September 30th. Um, so, John, so aware I, of the, yeah. Excuse me. Let, so, I actually looked in the file yesterday because I knew that Peter Wallace did this, and I found and an email then too. I mean, I'll give you, I'll give yep. you and John, that would be well, great. I'll give you all, yeah. all this, but I found, I was like, after I made it the agenda, I was like, you know what, I think we did this a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, and John's been talking to the other, and then he just went through and like yeah. marked it. Okay. So I'll give you this, That'd that way great. it gives you a kind of great. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, John's been talking to the other countywide EMCs and, and going over a lot of stuff. He has big dreams for a small town, but um, yeah, there's a lot of issues that he's been trying to uh, educate himself about and hopefully present some more information down the road to us. So, And this is something we have to do, I believe, every five years. Yep. So. Yep. This is something that county wants. Thank you. Thank you for finding that. Next. I don't think we need a motion. I don't think we need a motion for that right now either. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, next is the road projects for 2022 in the culverts. Uh, the box culverts were awarded to Monarch Products, uh, Rikert Road, Marion Drive South, Sheridan Road, and Marion Drive North. Total for all of this was $357,627. Uh, we received the contract and the performance bond from Monarch Products. Um, I'll be happy to sign that if you have it handy. Okay. Um, whether you want to pass it down now or just I'll grab, grab it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pass it down now. I'll just say I'll either do it now or after the meeting. Okay. But if you have it handy, let's just do it now. Uh, well, we, we haven't started manufacturing. We got it. Yeah, we got to get them to give us the, the things to do it. Yeah. Um, he, I did ask um, Spencer at the Planning Commission meeting when do they start manufacturing? Do they have to wait for the contract? He said, well, they were awarded the bid, but um, yes, they need the paperwork, um, but it's yeah. not going to happen overnight. So, Sue, yeah. on here, do you, am I signing one name of owner and then there writing my name? Marked with the yellow thing. Well, yeah, because I mean, it's marked, but it's name of owner and then buy. So we put Marion Township. And then, okay. And then you. Copy. I think. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go with that. That makes sense. It's not right. You do that thing. Just to FYI, I'm pretty sure we have enough money in um, the road district funds to pay for all that. Oh, we do? Yeah. Yeah, last time I yeah. we do. Yeah, without transferring any funds. I could do that, but nine and ten if you like. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. We have now signed the contract there, and Butch, I'll keep you informed on when that comes in. What? I know. Oh yeah. Well, we'll know like when they start manufacturing. Yeah. There's usually like a month lead time. And so I when... did ask the question. Um, so for at least two of them, not three of them, we have bog turtle hit habitat. Mm -hmm. So what if they're manufactured after that window that we can put them in, mm -hmm. and they can be dropped off at the site? Mm -hmm. And then when we can put them in, we can put them we in. We just have to run a crane then. Because they said, we don't really want them dropped off here. We don't have the equipment to move them. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. um, anyway. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stage at location yeah. uh, or close by. And the, the worst and thing that might happen is... We didn't get the permit yet for... Um, <laughs> Mary, North. I was going to say it's, North, it's the last school. one. It's Mary North. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, like I said, when we get closer to time, we'll we'll work on that collectively. The the only thing that I would say is if we're dropping on site, we might have to get like a temporary easement to be able to to drop it because some of these might exceed the right of way. Um, but we'll again once we know a little closer to time, we'll talk to Andy and see what we have to do to say like, hey, we're going to be plopping this uh, kind of on the edge of your yard. We'll get everything signed and notarized and proper that way. Um. Okay. Next up, the Main Street Traffic Study. This was performed for stop signs at Church and Main, Water and Main, and Sharp and Main by Traffic Planning and Design. Um, we had the report reviewed by the engineer and the solicitor. Um, we were chasing a, a possibility of being able to put the sign in, but it looks like just by the, the nature of what the current regulations are for stop signs, um, we're not going to be able to put something in. Um, there would be a way to do it, but it would remove a lot of parking spaces along Main Street, which we, we do not want to do. So at this point, I think that's kind of a, a settled thing. We'll be chasing some of the other traffic calming solutions. Okay. So we'd be able to do a crosswalk? Oh, yeah. The crosswalks are being okay. painted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're already in. That's and supportable. And signage life. for crosswalk yeah. ahead to mm -hmm. slow down? Yeah, crosswalk ahead, pedestrian crossing. Um one of the things that I'm almost positive we don't need any sort of ordinance to place is the like the speed limit change signs where it says like 25 yep. ahead. We can put those in because that's a that's a kind of a for awareness sign mm -hmm. more than anything else. It's a non-enforceable 
So where, where um, are the crosswalks going to go in then? Uh, at each one of the intersections on Main Street. So all these, all, okay. All of them. Okay. Uh, I saw that Rizzoni has those little the bollocks. temporary. Yeah. So this is, we had talked about getting them a while ago, and I think we may have actually even approved getting them, but there was a, I don't know where this, there was a, an astronomical hike in price, because like when I first looked at them, they were like 100 bucks a piece, and then they went up to like 350 and it was like, we want to do this, but like we, we can, we can wait a little bit until they're not three times the cost. Um, but the, the game plan here was to put the crosswalks in and then on Main Street to there, put the, the bollards in the center that have the like pedestrian crossing, crossing slow sorts of thing. Um, I also want to check again with uh, McCarthy Engineering because like I know I had asked this before and I got an answer, but I, I don't know. It, it, it can't be right. There, I, it's just I feel like we don't have enough speed limit signs on, on that road. There's a, a minimum and maximum in vehicle code for that. But like there, there should be more like the things that say speed limit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll okay. be asking him again about that because I drove Main yeah. Street the one day and I'm like, it's just it seems like there's not enough signage yeah. for this. Jim had got us the speed sign, uh, the yes, estimate. The Where yeah. is it? I didn't see it. <laughs> Further down. Where? Forgive me. Down, Forgive me. I just overlooked it then. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Sorry. At the top of the page. I should have put those together. No, it's okay. No, 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 no. Thank you. So uh, that's pretty much the stop sign thing. Okay, is, so you're going to do a done, a done deal. Andy. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. ask Andy about yeah. the uh, the posting for speed limit signs. Yeah. Um, We're trying to consolidate, so just let you know, like as best as you can, if you have a question for Andy, let's try to consolidate all of our questions because every time you ask a question and follow up question, all that other stuff, it's, it just blocks us. So like if there's questions for Andy, shoot an email to all of us because we might have more questions. And then it'll just be like one email rather than five emails because we get charged by the minute. So just as a FYI, I keep it in just the back of your head. To review it. Yeah, right. Well, well, <laughs> well, well, yes and no, because, but it's just the constant back and forth. You could see the difference in the billing. So Okay. Um, Irene, so you had the attachment engineer. So number nine. Uh, so, um, I contacted, I think now we've contacted up to a dozen engineering firms. Kraft is the only group that gave us a, uh, response back and we're waiting for another response. I asked them to give it to us before the, uh, meeting. We haven't heard anything as of yet. If we're not going to hear anything, then I'm going to go with Kraft. So, okay. yep. yeah, you can only ask someone to do something so many times before you say, you know, yep. you're a grown up, you could, you could do this if you want the business, then you're going to go out there. So the added bonus yeah. is we already deal with craft regularly. Yeah. We know yeah. they're a known entity yeah. to us yeah. as well. So, so, and item number 10, the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, so I actually uh, reached out to the Cohen law firm, very nice group. They said it's a flat fee. So I had asked uh, Andy if he had any copies of our agreement from 2013, because all we could find is a 2003 agreement. Did he? He did. He did. Okay. So we could, we're just, I'll, I'll be on Thursday. Yeah. So I think the letter says that the sky sent us a draft of the new. So, so, so I had, right, right. I had asked Andy if he had a copy of our 2013 yep. agreement, but the Cohen uh, law firm was going to send us a draft. Oh, no, no. Um, Comcast, Comcast. Eric from Comcast was going to send us a copy of what they have. So we could forward everything over to yeah, Andy uh, the Cohen, to perfect, 213. So we could forward everything to the Cohen Law Group, let them make a decision. It's a flat fee, they said, because now we've received close to $12,000 from, mm -hmm. Com from Comcast. Mm -hmm. So I think a small flat fee is worth, and having your contract in place, a solid contract for the next decade, I think it's well worth it, yeah. you know, for whatever Again, fee it is. It yeah. depends on what the flat fee is. Right, right. I'm sure. $1,500 right. or 15000 Right. He says it's so, not astronomical. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says it's based on what we receive for the franchise fee. Okay. So, so we're, I'm just, I'm, I'm taking care of all that stuff. So, so if, if, if that's we, happening, so I just made yeah. a, another folder there under the professional services. If okay. we actually do go with the that law firm, yeah, we can do the same thing that we were talking about with them. Is we just put everything in that 
Okay. Perfect. Like, the old one. Y yeah. On yeah. There, yes. Yeah. yeah. Any any historical stuff, whether it's so the 2003, it the 2013, easier. if we have it, let's get it in that that franchise fee folder. Okay. okay. Excellent. So it's just getting the information from Eric, from Andy, and forwarding it to Cohen Law Group. Like I said, I'll be here Thursday for part of the morning. So. Yes, Tim. How many firms did we reach out to to submit for engineering for the tax? A dozen, about a dozen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. we got we got some flat out no's, no thank yous, I should say, and some people just didn't respond. So, um, I think like three didn't respond, but the rest were like, we just don't have time for you. Yeah. Yeah, I've just in the course of doing like the roof stuff a couple of years ago, I had a similar turnout. And Irene, for things that you've asked for things with the building. I still with the roof, I, I contacted, and this is not an exaggeration, probably 25 different companies. And I only got word back from like five. And that was over the span of months of yep. chasing, emailing, calling. Um, it's it's very hard to get professional help yeah. for projects sometimes. I, I created a spreadsheet in there about the building stuff and like no response, no response. I put the dates, you know, mm -hmm. all, you know. If well, I'm waiting for one more person, yeah. Yeah. so and if if this person responds, it's just a comparison of of money, basically. Yeah, you know, seeing how much they're going to cost us. A lot of these firms, Dan, are looking for people. Yeah, and they can't find anybody that wants to go to work. So we've had a yeah. couple of them that have told us we'd love to do this, we, and we've been trying to hire an engineer for the last. X amount of months and we haven't had any luck. Yeah, they don't have enough people. Yep. So, problem. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the office equipment. Um, I had sent Irene this. And uh, Jim, I'll pass it down to you. Yay! Uh, it is a trays. color dual tray laser printer, which is going to give us the best Good. useful life and everything like that. It is 550 bucks, but it is um, pretty much everything that Irene had on her wish list. And it is uh, also, I believe, it's not my wish list. That's what do, we do, 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 do. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you know, it, it's well. When I when I say wish list, yeah, uh, it's actually it's a uh, brother. Yeah, they're they're a good brand for printer. It's one of the ones that if I were to recommend something to somebody that needed a little more heavy duty, um, yeah. I would go that route. Um, order it. Okay, I'll yeah, order. Well, we need to make. We need. Hold on, hold on. So let's do it. Thursday night, or we have to amend the agenda. Those yeah. are the two options because we're spending money. No, yeah. I have it on the agenda. Oh, oh, okay, but I mean it's on the agenda, so you can. Okay, uh, so okay. okay, so yeah. If I hear a motion to get that ordered, I will get that ordered. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the purchase of a brother printer for the cost of five hundred and forty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents plus, plus shipping costs and tax. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. So then we can move over because now I have a printer. Okay. It's it's new. It's new. So, so I'll... Yeah. Oh, geez, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. Or no, item 10 no, is the... No, I did the Comcast, item 10 is the Comcast franchise, franchise renewal. Comcast franchise renewal. That was the, the law firm that we were talking about. Yeah. So... Yep, so once he's got the stuff, which we're going to move the desk over, and then Sue can move and file cabinets into there and, and arrange it, rearrange it how she likes. Yeah, Dan, that was the, um, when we were talking about the flat fee for the, the renegotiation and like the, the stuff from 2003 and 2013. <laughs> you you might have had a, a pleasant daydream there for a second. It was a, a couple of minutes conversation, but uh, we went through that and we're we're probably going to enlist the... Sure, sure, please. Uh, the township receives a refund. Correct. Of this. What's the percentage of Marion Township residents compared to the number of Stonecroft Village residents that participate? Well, it's it's, in it, yeah, it's everybody in Marion. So if you yeah. have, we have um, no way Stone of knowing. Stonecroft is not its own little entity. It is part of Marion Township. I understand. Okay. Yeah. 
even though you have an HOA, it's still part of Marion Township. Yeah, it's it's based on the percentage of what we're, we're total. The, the you can get a list um, different subscriptions like limited, basic. Yeah, um, yeah. but it doesn't. It's not specific by and then it gets them out. It, right. It's not based on how many people have Comcast. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. based on what you subscribe to. Yeah. So if a lot of people in Stonecroft yes. are getting like HBO or something like that, and we get a, I don't know, like a 1% turn I back. I, yeah. I'm, I'm just making yes. up a number here. Yeah. That's what brings the revenue in. So if a lot of people in Stonecroft, let's say, have like satellite, like they've got direct TV or something like that, we don't get anything, don't get anything then. Yeah. So. There's no breakdown. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just using that as an example, no, but it's the yeah. breakdown of what people subscribe. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not that what specific. They subscribe yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's the only thing around here. Yeah. yeah. It's no other. Right. Well, that's a telephone line, or whatever they. I don't have Verizon. There's no I'm other cable close to company. The I just called them a week person. or two ago. Yeah, and they don't have not it. available. No. Yeah. Really? Wow. Well, then they're yeah. close. Yeah. Because I'm not that far from the front. And they said do, no go. They they do, like you and a lot of other people, I'd love yeah. to get yeah. Comcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, item 12. Irene, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, we're just waiting for Andy to review the proposed dog leash and curbing ordinance. Uh, he said hopefully he'll have it by this meeting. And I'm looking forward to that because it's a problem in my neighborhood. Next is the Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403. It's about the keeping of pets. Yeah. yeah. Um, potentially to change to allow more chickens on properties less than one acre. Uh, Andy gave us the Long Swamp Township Ordinance to review and compare. Um, I had sent some notes back. I actually put it into a... Um, I sent this to you guys. He put it into a our our format. Our, our form, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so okay. this is chickens and goats. This is specifically uh, domesticated livestock things, and it gives a couple examples like chickens, goats, fowl. Um, it really kind of gives it a more broad definition and sets um, more realistic limits for an agricultural type of community. Um, like I said, I had a couple of little tweaks that I had sent to Andy around some of the wording, but it, it really gives us um, the structure that we want without having it be either too open-ended for or against this the stuff animal. being there. Yeah. So then, in, in the case of the person that had the complaints on there, it addresses the concerns about uh, containing the animals and having them not defecate everywhere, but also still builds in the allowance that you can keep that sort of thing as a I understand yeah. you get rid of the chickens. Yeah. Uh, that's but unfortunate. Then, right. And then there's some overlap in the dog leash ordinance as well as far as controlling your animals and defecation mm -hmm. issues. Because I specifically wrote right. animals and not necessarily dogs. Yeah, so, so we have kind of we're, like we're, overlap. We're, we're covering I think yeah. that well where we, yeah. we give people the the protection that they need to, to continue to keep things like that. But then we also right. make it sure that if somebody has a nuisance situation that we can address it appropriately. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you would, whenever you decide you're okay with this, you would need to motion to do that. Then it needs to be reviewed by our planning commission. Everybody, each municipality's planning commission, then it needs to go to joint planning commission. Then it needs yeah. to have a hearing to be approved. Okay. So what I would suggest is let's read through it one more time before okay. Thursday night. Give it our final blessing, make a motion and vote on it on Thursday night. And then we, that'll start kind of the domino effect well, of everything else. Commission yeah. can, did you send them. us the, the modifications? Yes, yeah, everybody, everybody was on that. No, I gotta find it in um, email. If not, I'll, yeah. I'll find it. And okay. uh, send it to me and then I'll send it. Yeah, chan chances are if Andy Maybe. sent if Andy sent a copy over that he had typed up, it probably already has my additions in it. They were largely I don't want to say semantic, but I changed a couple of things and I added one or two things just this to make sure Thursday, July twenty eighth. That was probably after. Please remove yeah. the draft or any contact or yeah, That was probably after I sent it. So let me let me read through it and make sure my yeah yeah that was that was before I was overseas. I think so. It's changed. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check it. But like I said, just everybody read through it one more time and make sure we're comfortable with it. 
and we'll move through that because it's it's gonna like I said start off a stream of dominoes. Okay, I have it. Yeah. And maybe one of the other municipalities will want to change it in their mm -hmm. district too. So yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll start the, the chain reaction. Yeah. Off. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I did hear someone talking to me. They live in another community, and they were saying how their ordinances pass where they can't. Yeah, yeah, they have to get rid of their chickens. I remember mm -hmm. driving through Myerstown, and yeah. there were a bunch of signs for like "Save the Ducks." Yeah. And, like I looked into it, it was because there were people in there that had pet ducks, yeah. and the, they were being forced by the municipality to get rid of them because of the the, the ordinance. Yeah, it was. So where wherever we can. Uh, my firm belief on this is local government should be there to protect you when you need it and really kind of it's not when you don't. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a situation where we can offer some semblance of protection to people and not be enforcing laws that don't really fit for the, the community that we live in, to, to put it bluntly. Um, uh, do we have anything else that we want to say about no, that? No, I think okay. we're good. Okay, next up is the pole mounted uh, speed sign. Um, Jim, I know you had gotten some quotes around that. Uh, that's something that if we want to go down that avenue, uh, I know the, the solar powered ones uh, and the things that mounted the poles were a little on the pricey side. About $3,000. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can build that in as we're starting to look at the budget for next year as like a, a capital uh, purchase on our, our, our capacity. Um, we can look at getting one, putting it on Main Street there and, and seeing... Um, Having something that's a little more of a, uh, I'll take permanent. I would probably probably should consider putting one on each end. Yeah, yeah, so, on each okay. end. So, 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 each looking, so we're looking at like about six thousand. So when we go to budget that, we want to put in like six or seven. Yeah, as so that. I don't think we have it in the budget for this. Oh, year. We, we don't. Yeah, I, yeah. I guarantee you, we don't. So, um, but with that said, we're only like four months away from the new year yep. anyway. Yeah. So, uh, we'll build that in there, and we'll look at that. Um, we'll still. Try and get the other speed sign operation yeah. and, and travel that around. But I think the the pole mounted ones would be better as a, a semi permanent. We strap it there, and that's that's where it lives. Are we any closer to getting that sign? I haven't had a chance to. He's not Peter Wallace has not been around. Yeah, to so say between like Peter Wallace traveling and me traveling, we haven't been. Do you in, have a cable? He said there's some kind there's, of. Cable it's a cable? USB to serial cable. Have I have one somewhere. I know I did. Can we look for that? Yeah. I'll try it. Yeah, I, I just got I gotta go into my attic and take around the boxes. Well, we're going um, through the roof now, right? Yeah, <laughs> I've got easy access through the roof. Um but uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll be able to build that into the budget easy enough for next year. Uh next is the PennDOT waiver request for engineering fees. We received a letter in June from Ratsu Engineering on behalf of PennDOT to identify the floodplains within the Talpahawken Forge Road Bridge Rehabilitation Project area. Uh, this needed to be reviewed by our engineer. They were told we will bill uh, them for the engineering fees. They are now requesting a waiver of those engineering fees. No. Yeah. Well, I had put that yeah. in the email. Yeah. That it's this a... needs to be reviewed by our engineer. You, we can't do it. Yeah. And it will be billed to those fees because that's what I tell them. No. Yeah. Like, well, they're just, yeah. it's just a yeah. formality because yeah. I have that in the email. So. So, okay. so they're asking our engineer to do work, but they don't want to pay for it. We should eat the box. That's this is kind of that's ultimately if you put Red it down to brass. Did our engineer Red have to review? Yes. Yes. Why? Yeah. They've already got an engineering firm that's made a decision. That so it so they done. need we yeah. identify floodplains need to be identified within this project. I don't know where the floodplains are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't they reviewed that? They cannot contract with Red to. All right, do this. So, well, so, so my my theory on this is Retu should do one of two things. They should either look up the U, like USGS floodplain maps or like the uh, uh, I would FEMA, suspect the they've FEMA. already done, but they haven't done that. Yeah. And they're kind of yeah, yeah. Or, the or if they're if they're getting, they have to have our engineer do something. It's part of their project and should be built into the cost of their projects. Like that's that's my stance on this. I would contact them and find out if they've already. Done I'll call Thursday then. I'll call yeah. Thursday and say this is not cool with us because you're asking us to eat an expense based on a project that you want to do. This it, it's expensive. We can't eat that kind of a cost. We're a small town. We have the first building. No, I don't know. It should be built into. I didn't into, see it on it the be built into your project. Like, yeah, you, you don't go into a well, project. You already go look at. It. Yeah. Did McCarthy already look at this? I have no idea. Well, yeah. I, I, I doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll give him a call on Thursday and say, you know, this is not 
uh, the board will not approve of this at this point because you're asking our engineer to perform services. You should uh, contract with either McCarthy directly or we are going to bill you for the services. They can't contract with oh, yeah, McCarthy directly. They can't. McCarthy's employed by us. Uh, yes. So forgive me. Um, let me ask them if they've that. already, ask if they've already it, identified that. Yeah. It also doesn't have to be McCarthy. It just has to be somebody who's going to be able to identify engineer. the blood plants. Right. And it's, so, that doesn't have to be any of us. Because like I said, there's FEMA maps. Yeah. Like I could look up a FEMA map right now. I think they've already. Yeah. I think, don't get too crazy. With me. <laughs> no. them, have you done this already? Yeah. They say, that's why we're asking for the waiver because we've already accomplished it. Say, oh. Okay. Right. But if they're asking our engineer to perform a service for their project, why and should we we'll, eat the cloth? Oh, yeah, if they're asking us right. to, to do this, yeah. Then, yeah, they need to be billed. Yeah. I'm suspecting they're asking for the waiver because they've already done it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, even so, somebody's got to pay McCarthy, and at, the, at that point, I agree it's with that. Not right? our it project. shouldn't be us. It's not our project. Okay. Next up on the agenda, the Berks County Association of Township Officials 2022 Convention. Uh, this is for supervisors, secretary, treasurer, tax collector, and elected auditors, and will be held on Thursday, October 20th, 2022, from 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at the Old Lake Fair Center. Reservations must be made by October 1st. There is no charge. We would need to make a motion to authorize anyone to attend. Um, I'll make a motion to allow uh, any interested supervisor, secretary, treasurer, tax collector or elected auditors to attend the Berks County Association of Township Officials Convention mm -hmm. 2022. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Next on the agenda is the Berks County Public Works Association Annual Trade Show. This will be held on Wednesday, September 28th, 2022 at the Ole Fairgrounds from 8 a.m. to 2. Uh, Jane Meeks, the Executive Director of the Berks County Solid Waste Authority, will speak on recycling grants. Equipment skills rodeos will be held and uh, registration would be required before September 18th. Um, we just need to... We just need a motion to allow... You should motion if you can. Yeah, so... Because... I'll, I'll make a motion to allow any interested uh, supervisors, secretary, treasurer, uh, or road crew to attend the Berks County Public Works Association annual trade show at, on September 28th, 2022. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Just let me know if you want to go. Yeah. Okay. Next is the statewide tax recovery close and return report uh, per, ta uh, per capita tax for Zachary Meck and Barry Sands, who are both deceased. Uh, in the past, we had given uh, an exemption request form for them to complete. So we, we got this like cryptic letter <laughs> and I emailed them and said, are you not going to be sending us exemption requests? Like, you know, those yellow things mm -hmm. you know we've got. Not for these two people, from but from now on, we will. No, if they want an exemption, they give us the exemption form. Okay, I'll let you know. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a lengthy form, and I'm happy to grant the the exemption from a head tax for somebody who wasn't alive, but they need to they need to go, they need to go through the motions. I know that Jack Neck passed away years ago. Yeah, I don't know Barry Sands. Um, and usually they give us a copy of the obituary. Yeah. To prove that the person is deceased. Yeah. I'll let them know. Yeah. I'll there's, there's no reason that they shouldn't go through the normally established process. Okay. Okay. Next is the 4045 Conrad Weiser Parkway notice of violation cease and desist order. Uh, we had a complaint about numerous junk vehicles on this commercial property. McCarthy Engineering did an inspection on August 10th, 2022, and found a clear violation of the approved permit for an automobile repair garage. They actually now meet the definition of a junkyard, according to our zoning. On August 11th, they were issued a notice of violation and cease and desist order. I, I imagine as the, the weeks and months progress, we are going to hear a lot more about this as this unfolds. Um, next on the agenda is the purchase of signs. We will need some stop signs, uh, some stop sign ahead signs. We need a canal road sign. Um, as we discussed previously, I want to get um, like uh, the speed limit change signs and uh, some intersection 
ahead signs for out on like uh was it Ketterman? It's that weird intersection that's kind of a shape over there. So Ketterman and Wintersville Stoutsburg. Yeah. Um that if everybody's okay with it, I will put together an order for MSI Excellent. and we'll buy some some of the needed signage. Please. Um I may or may not have the, the the cost for that for Thursday night, depending on how fast they get back to me. But um, this is going to include some of the crosswalk and pedestrian signs as well. Yeah, Perfect. I'll get I'll get the list together. I'll send them yeah. an email either today or tomorrow. That way, hopefully, they can get it. Okay. Okay. Uh, which ones do we have? Are they just the crosswalk or like crosswalk ahead or like just the little pedestrian people or? Just ones that say like crosswalk or something? Yeah. Well, af after the meeting, after the meeting, show me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, after, after the meeting, we'll, we'll look. Yeah. That sign that's down at that's, Sheridan on the 422 is a that yeah. sign yeah. because it's on wooden, two wooden posts like call them, yeah. let them know. Yeah, the sign itself is wood too, so it's old. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't put signs up. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll get the sign purchase rolling on that and we'll have some more signs to have Butch put in. Uh, next is the ball field maintenance and lights. Apparently, the third base line is flooding and eroding. There's lots of weeds that have come up. Uh, the MTCA wants to install lights at the ball field for nighttime games. Um, I don't have an objection to I this. I never had a request for nighttime games. Yeah. Donnie. I mean, is... Why is, do they want to do this? Is, is the MTCA looking to fund putting lights in? Because that's probably going to be very expensive. Okay. I, I mean, thought we were just going to put lights on here that we could flip. Oh, oh, okay. That's that's a lot easier than putting oh. like ball field lights up. Okay. Then I okay. misinterpreted your okay. text. Sorry. Yeah, I mean that's something we can talk to an electrician about putting some lights up or just getting some of those little like the, the solar power battery that they, they just they stay on like lights and just strapping them up with the building. Um, there okay. is a ten o'clock curfew in there. You can change. Uh, like, no. Understood, but I mean, we can still leave lights on in the building. I mean, if nothing else, that that's always a good. Not that we have problems extensively with vandalism or theft or anything like that, but if you leave <laughs> perimeter lights on, it, it it is statistically proven to help cut that down. So I mean, we'll we'll look at it. We'll assess some options. And we'll put something up. The the I'll say that the the sticky option of just strapping it to the side of the building is going to be the least costly because of not having to have an electrician well, run next on the agenda power. Is discussion about putting in a ice hockey we would need lights on the fence. oh yeah for sure so for sure right back to the flooding and eroding yeah. so the, the, what, what, what do we need to fix the ball fields um we're gonna need Can to... you fix that butcher do we need to get we, somebody in here we could regrade it uh i check uh i check the i can buy a Native foot wide piece of flag. Now let's go back to third base. He's third base. Third base. Third, yeah. third base. Third the, base. The, the erosion base. on the ball field. Well, I, I was out there. There's a little cage there. Uh, I think uh, if, if we uh, uh, observe that over the winter and, and try to patch it up in the spring when we want to play the holiday, I think that'll work. Do you think we need like a, a little pump or a swale or something there to try to keep well, the water? People, people that uh, told the food baker, he said uh, he helped to put that ball field in when originally he helped put that ball field in and above third base and second and third base. That's a stone now. We'd have to. We have to get like gravel or 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 ground dump there. We can't dig. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not. We're not saying dig a trench. I'm saying, would it make more sense if we have water coming off the road, build something to help uh, keep it? I, I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Uh, but but you'd have to 
you have to make make the home mm -hmm. because uh, you, you can't you said you can't take the it's too much of stone out there. And uh and uh, if we do something like that from from the road past uh past second and so second and third phase, mm -hmm. hey that that would help a lot. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is Don't take a look at something on the side of third base, Dylan, because that's what it's washing out. What we're trying to avoid here is having to buy more more of the Dynatex next year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we still have a little bit left. We don't uh, have uh, truck. Me, me and Don were talking about uh, the fall field during his life. We uh, we ought to make it make it like Google store has it up there behind Turkey Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they just have uh, they just have a diamond tag for the base lines uh, and how the rest of the field as uh, it's grass, grass. Huh. And, and that would save a lot a lot of money because they do not buy right. diamond tag. Okay, so that would be something we'd want to dig out the center in the spring and then like seed it or, or get sod or something like that so that it has a chance to establish before they start playing games yeah, if they you, go that route. You don't you don't want to start grass now. No, 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 it's too late in the year. Well I'm just worried about that water that's coming off. It's yeah. just coming right in. And it's yeah. taking out that whole base. So what I think we should have Butch do is uh, maybe go out some, with some like sticks or poles or something like that and mark off where we'd want to make a tiny little swale to try to keep the water yeah. running. It'll run off the road and then run along that rather than running into the ball field. If we can't. If we don't have the equipment to do it, then let's find out someone who does. And I mean, it, it should be pretty it. basic. Like yeah, if this, would this would think. even be like shovels, for example. I would think. Yeah. So... Okay. Give it some thought, Butch, and let's. I mean, let's get it done. If it's well, buying a couple I, of inches of dirt, I, then. I guess I don't want to fix the top of the line. Oh, you know, he, mm -hmm. he, he, he knows his stuff. He did everything already. Yeah, he knows his okay. stuff. Yeah. Okay. okay. It, it, you're usually in favor of that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I want to. Yes. I want to mitigate the problem so that we don't keep uh, fixing the same thing over and over again. I mean, I don't want to go over where you were area ahead of Bob, please. Well, I mean, I, I would think MTCA, Don included, you, we don't want to have to keep refilling and regrading that ball field every year because that's a, a big, big amount of labor that you guys have to do. And it's already a big enough effort to try to get it ready for the season anyway, or let alone to have to do major repairs every time. So. Yeah, let us know what we need to do, Butch, and uh, I think you have the, the board's backing on on doing it. Absolutely. And then can we order some weed killers so that they don't have to hand pick weeds? Yeah. Uh, I understand in the past they just went around and sprayed, you know, all the back area and underneath the bleachers. And yeah, let's, this year uh, they were they were, they were picking them by hand, putting but them you, eight but hour, you have to be careful about weed killer hour. because of the. I know there's an issue. With who's you have to be certified, certified. as a weed killer. So I suppose if you make it like um, home remedy, mm -hmm. that, yeah, like, with, like that, vinegar, like organic, is, kind yeah. Of thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I need to spray that. And yeah. maybe we have to have somebody come in and spray it twice a year because uh, that's we can't have somebody out there spending eight hours at a time, mm -hmm. several weekends in a row pulling weeds. Especially that area back in the back. That's yeah. Oh, yeah there's yeah. there's poison ivy and everything no, else. Right. There is no poison ivy. Well, there. the person that is pulling weeds also thinks that her family owns the playground and they do not. Well, we've established. So um, uh, we have yeah. established that we have a deed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if she wants to pull weeds for the township, she's welcome. Right. Um, okay. No, she's pulling weeds for the MTCA. Okay, well, for part of the township. We right. have to make sure that that's maintained. And if it means that we have to pay somebody to do it, then I think we're going to have to do that. We need to maintain that area. We can't just have weeds. Well, if, uh, if we uh, buy some uh, Woody Rondo, it's called Woody Rondo, uh, I'll spray it. I, I, I actually 
have a private amphitheater uh, and in Roanoke, um, Roanoke itself, uh, a whole woman can buy. Right. You don't need a right. you don't need a certified yeah. person. I'll, I'll spray it. Okay, perfect. I'll spray it for you. Thank you. Uh, yesterday I was out behind the one, not the tennis court, the other court, and cut those weeds off, but it ought to be sprayed. Okay. So if you sort of authorize me to go yep. get some food, no under maintenance. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, you're, it's under maintenance. you're allowed go to ahead. do it, do it. Yeah, go ahead. Dylan, we just discussed at the meeting too the other day some drainage down there that's got trees growing in front of it and really needs cleaned out. Do you recall? Probably the storm or drainage area needing, I guess, the five fold back in the alley or so we used to have oh we used to one, that that part so me and me and Don was talking about okay. that and I'm I'm gonna show him that we used to contract with the company who sprayed that every year and then one year that contract was terminated. I mean that drain that area has to be kept open so the water can flow. Well if you've already cleaned it. I don't even know where the complaint came from, but somebody brought up the fact that it was, they felt there was trees growing in front of them. Yeah. Well, I recall when you go back there and you put a break to the alley, some of the leaves too, but that break built up. That came up. Uh, I have a couple of checks that I did in the spring and in the fall. The same leaves gathering. Yeah, and, and, and as, as often as I've checked, it, it is clean. Okay. Right, right at the grave, but by the time they're talking, breeze, breeze, and. and uh, well, that probably has we, been spayed, sprayed for years, it's uh, at least four years. Exactly. Ago, right? Yeah, I was going to say. No, that contract was terminated since I'm here. I was going to say, I think they haven't sprayed since I've been involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. It Why? used to be Tunnels and Burger. They used to spring. Okay. <laughs> they might also want to keep in mind the future of the current flooding that happened right in that alley behind us. Al. Yeah. Yeah. That we were talking with their inspiration. I was on the board that but uh, they were talking about extending that drain from uh, where Catalyst had a mm -hmm. where they had a race car. Mm -hmm. Back to the highway to catch that and continue that highway to the where it comes from the old Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I am. Yeah. 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 Well, this, this, is, this is an old problem. Yeah. So, yeah. That was yeah. a list of things to deviate from me. So, I think the trail where the flood. Super slow sand, exactly. And braided out that tower. Mm -hmm. oh, what, uh, what would you think that we uh, do? Uh, Digging a ditch there uh, along Mary and his garage and connecting to that, to the sewer we could get from. What used to happen? We need to have the uh, soil. Okay. Get it so done. That's that, that, that still, still going to cure the cow. In one position here, a proper place. Uh, might actually have two. Uh, one over at the uh, right. Can we have them two before hurricane season? I would say whether. Uh, but what the type of what we have to do? Uh, yeah, we have to do. Well, that's the pipe that we've talked about yep. before that's coming yep. down. Yeah. So yeah. let's yeah. let's send a letter then. Yeah, okay. We need yeah. we need to get something done. Yeah. So so well, can. That is yeah. 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 So, Sue, so could you add that to the agenda, and we'll more than likely we'll we'll turn it over to what we, whether it's McCarthy Engineering or Kraft when we appoint uh, Kraft. Uh, the the the, yeah. the the extending of the pipe on Marion Drive for drainage. Oh, yeah. but, oh no 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 no. 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 Like the input. No. Well, honestly, yeah. while we're waiting for the culverts to come in, this will be something good that we can get done yeah. with 
again, like you said, we have the backhoe now that we didn't before. So Butch and Lee and maybe like Ryan Allgaier or somebody like that can can go through and do this. Yeah, I, I know. But I mean, during the day, and he's got a lot, even if he's not driving, he has a wealth of knowledge and expertise on on that sort of things. So um, bottom line is we have we have the equipment, we have the manpower. It's just getting the design so that we're not draining the wrong direction, like you had said, um, and getting the parts and doing it. So yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah, and yeah. We probably need yeah. to get an easement to go into the property. Well, yeah, I mean that's that's the reason I want to have like a part there. Somebody look at it as soon as we can go through the process. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for your yeah. that. Yeah. We want to know things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, can I can I would get some of that Rondo now? Or I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Go go ahead and get it. How much, yeah. is, how much is it? Like hundreds and hundreds of dollars? Oh. No, we're we're talking yeah. like twenty thirty dollars. It it falls okay. it falls under the under fifty dollar yeah. rule that we have. And it, it, it's building maintenance stuff. So. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll go up here in the east. Yeah. yeah. Can you get some of the weed by the front walkway here too? Oh, <laughs> you oh, did? Oh, thank, thank you. you. Weed whack is what they need. Yeah. Okay, now okay. go to the next one. Yeah. The, next the multi purpose court. The ice skating. You were saying you got okay, plastic. Yeah, I, I got it. One place around here so far that I'm not on the bigger piece of ice cream. I would be wide enough. And uh, and that's all the KK mill in Richland. Mm -hmm. And it's it's eighty foot wide, but I only need a sixty-five foot, but uh like you person these players only have like sixty foot. So I had to go with the eighty foot wide and it didn't cost uh I hard seventy five dollars. Are you are you looking at like a forty there's a forty five mil? Like what's the thickness on the plastic that you're looking at? It, it, it's uh it's a uh, five mil that's uh, low density. Five mil is really thin. So no, they're about ice it's, skating it's, right yeah. so it, explain to them what you're thinking of doing. Uh, I just wanna lay lay the plastic down, it has the homes on the side. You go up over the homes with the plastic, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, Donnie said, uh, like sandbags or, or gravel pads. I say, KK has gravel pads, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, the gravel bags are four foot in length, mm -hmm. and, and it would take. Uh, uh, cover the whole thing, which I don't think we have to, uh, would take uh, some uh, in, uh, 84 or something, 84 eggs, but I don't think we have to uh, lay them against each other. I believe you could skip it. And, uh, and uh, they won. Originally, they want five seventy five a piece for the bags. Mm -hmm. So, I guess my question is, liability wise, where where are we liable for if someone hurts and falls themselves on a skating rink? Uh, do we have to have extra insurance for that? I mean, I would want to double check with Seltzer, but I'm yeah. almost positive this falls in the same thing as the skate park. We're actually technically covered if we had that sort of recreational thing. Yeah. Um, if we put something in like a vending machine, no, definitely yeah. not. Yeah. But it's it falls under the same sort of okay. recreational area as like the playground. Yeah. Then the other question is obviously you need ice and snow to have a skating rink. You just need cold enough weather. They cold would fill it. Yeah, they would have yeah. like the fire company come over and just fill yeah. it up. Well, I think we can get uh, the former in back there with these water pumps. Yeah. All right. So that's my my concern about the liability. Yeah. So yeah, if we send an email to I think it's Jen. Jen's the rep at Seltzer. I could I could do that Thursday Is also. She might. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Actually, I did say that the other night about when they put it in behind Boyer's mm -hmm. over last winter. It was yeah. well used, and the kids had mm -hmm. a good time. Yeah, I mean, like I said, so, I, functionally, I don't have any objections. The only questions I had was like material wise, because mm -hmm. like if we're looking at like a, essentially a, a 
uh, a, a, we'll call it a pond liner that they use on farms for like, yeah. like manure bogs or like pond. Um, that's probably a little overkill. Like that's usually like a 45 mil. Yeah. You use really thick stuff for pond liners. You probably only need like 10 or 12 mil mm -hmm. for um, so yeah, get me get me some more details, Butch. I'll help you look and see if there's something we can get cheaper you know, online. I, you know, I know the guy that uh, builds your uh, bits that gives a lot of line. Mm -hmm. Like the EPDM stuff. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually wondering if because the MTCA is a charity, technically that if maybe somebody could donate or partially donate some of the liner, like even if they say like, hey, we're we're gonna give you a 50% discount, we, we could certainly give some money to the MTCA potentially to make that happen, but leverage that that fact that you're a charity um, for sure. Like you, you've got it, you might as well use it. There are no way to steal that. They tried sealing it and it didn't take. I think it's it's just so porous anymore that um, unless you want something really extreme, like you got a really thick epoxy and basically just resined. Well, yeah. Yeah, you will need a little yeah. Yeah. Liner. Liner. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's... I think isn't there certain yeah. uh, temperatures that a pumpkin does or doesn't do well with? What? Certain temperatures that a pumpkin does or doesn't do well with? You know, like because you can only use a certain temperature. Well, you know, have to be free, otherwise, you just have a stagnant pool of water that's yeah. mosquitoes. Yeah, I don't want that either. That's yeah. a good thought, Dave. That'd be a lot better situation. Yeah, that'd be a greater, better situation. Just like a so I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And they just, that's right. Yeah. Well, and you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right the first time, well, I mean, you don't have to deal with the, the, the other thing, just, just to throw this out, epoxy ceiling that we'd be cognizant of is with them talking about wanting to put gravel bags to build up, if we're just epoxy sealing that and the pump, we would still have to have something in order to keep the water in because just putting gravel bags isn't going to contain it. So there, there would be so, a, a smaller amount of stuff that we'd have to look at or, or look at building up the sides there if we were going to per permanently do that. But I thought the, the hump isn't high enough. Am I wrong in that? No. Yeah, but height-wise, because you're talking about the gravel bags, you have to build that up a bit, don't you? Oh, you're. Oh, okay, 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 okay. The the liner. Okay, okay, okay. Then, then I I take that back. I thought they needed more height to be able to get enough water volume in there. Okay. Now, if that's the case, then yeah, we can look into getting some really ex extreme like epoxy stuff and making it. Well, like that. Yeah, like I said, there's there's a number of different ways to approach this. And I can call my buddy Jeff here. Yeah. Um, I mean he don't he don't need epoxy, but he those people are too. Yeah, and there's there's companies you can get in to come in and do like epoxying on your floors in your basement for waterproofing purposes. It would just be that in a very extreme right yeah. And just running this through in my head too, we could ask uh Womelsdorf or Myerstown because it's it's got to be the same stuff that they put on the bottoms of swimming pools. So we could ask a place that has a swimming pool of like, what do you put, what do you put down? I, I, yeah. Like just, yeah. 
if, if, if you can figure out how to navigate CoStars, you can probably find it on there. And just, I can't. I yeah. have a difficult time on that website. Yeah, it, it, it's not easy. The yeah. last time I looked at CoStars. Where? Oh. That might be a situation if the ground's frozen. It's not going to be permeable. Well, wow. okay. And uh, huge, huge, and uh, and as far as insurance goes, it's kind of hurt that. Uh, billing, uh, I said, uh, sorry, but it's not, it's not yeah, but you never know these unless you ask the question. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree, completely agree. So, um Let's let's do a little more digging with that because, like I said, that yeah. working through it in my yeah, head it sounds it's like all cool the stuff that you can look at. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll make some inquiries out to a pool company. We'll put an email out to the the seltzer rep if it's Jen or not Jen. Doesn't I, matter. I forget the new ones. Maybe. Yeah. Um. We'll uh we'll see what we can do, but we have no objection really to to trying to use that as a skating rink, and then with the same thing with the lights. I think the uh. The stick on variety that are the, the solar powered ones yeah. is probably going to be the most economical, easiest yeah. thing to do. Yeah. I'll be here. Okay. Last item on the agenda is the proposed budget. Um, we have a couple of options here where we would be either scheduling a special meeting or doing this at a workshop. Um, personally, I like the the method of doing it at the workshop. I feel it's a little more public and it saves yep. us on advertising it's costs. Already an advertising yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say, Irene, first chance you get, um, if you can run me out a report of what we like we did last yeah. year, I'll yeah. put it into the same exercise and I'll crunch the numbers and make a couple yeah. of suggestions around things. We'll add things like the speed signs yeah. and anything else. We'll build in the the engineering costs and things that we're anticipating for Hydro Terror yeah. around the Act 537. So we've been on target. Yeah, we've been yeah. good. And we'll, I'll, have, I'll a... have the uh, budget for the meeting too. Yeah, well, we have if a... you could try to get this done by October because it yeah. needs to be advertised for 20 days before... If final sure, sure. If we can, so, so it's like a yeah process. yeah if we can get it sooner rather than later wait till yeah December 31st. yeah I'll like, do the stuff this week i'll yeah. probably be in tuesday and i'll uh, send you the truth truth yeah. be told i have yeah. it to a point where i can plug in historical data and it'll do a lot of the work for me the first yep. couple of years i had to, to manually forecast things yep um but we have it now where i can put the data in and i can see that the trending average over a three-year four-year span yeah. Um, I'm wondering if the computer, if the program can do that too. Yeah, I'd imagine QuickBooks. It's only can been do entered it. in. We need to bring up a bad word, but we may have to look at increasing taxes. We know you haven't so, done that forever, but yeah, the, the thing we're going to continue to make progress in this township, it's going to cost money. The problem with that is, and this is something like Peter and Wallace and I had talked about, was if we raise taxes, in order for it to make a, a tangible difference, we would have to really really raise taxes because if you raise it by like 0. 0.1 mil it's, you're only bringing you know, in ten thousand dollars you're looking at ten million dollar projects yeah roads that are all deteriorating to the point yeah. where they're starting to look like uh, the wild west yeah we i'm sorry we we don't know grants isn't going to handle it all we may have to look at we'd be looking at like to, to make that actually viable from an income standpoint we'd be looking for it going from like two mills up to like six and no one's going to live uh, here. Yeah, I'll that's... Live. I'll sell my house. I'll move. Well, I won't, pay I won't move, expenses. but I won't like it. But yeah. on the other hand, what do you? What else are we going to do? If you want to continue to make progress in this township, we have got to get serious about how we're going to get it done. Yeah. And two mills may or may not cut it. Yeah. Well, well let's let's look at the first draft of the budget and we'll and, review and that. And I've had people say to me, raise my taxes, fix the roads. At least I know where my money's going. To right. Yeah. But the problem, but the problem is, is we have to raise it so aggressively hard to make that even yeah. and attainable. The school tax, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, like I said, Jim, I, I agree with you. I completely agree with you. I, I'd be okay with paying more in taxes if we had more money to, to do certain things. But uh, again, the the actual translation of the millage to what we would see as an income, it, it would be it would be astronomical. It would be like we get run out of town with tor torches and pitchforks yep. to make that actually a viable thing. And maybe we do it in baby steps. Yeah, I mean, it could be a situation where we raise it a little bit year over year. Or... The budget, but 
This is I'll, I'll do the same thing that I've done the past couple of years. It's just gotten more expensive too. Yeah. And, I mean, we just found out on the sewage project it went from mm. five million to ten million. Yeah. I'll use the same sheets that I used last year, and every year what I've given you guys so far is there's a, an analysis of two mils, two point one, and two point two. And you can see really where that translates into from an income standpoint, as well as like, okay, that would give us an extra 2.2. We have $50,000 more in the operating budget. Um, that'll give us uh, kind of a painted picture. And if you want, I can throw in another tab there where like, well, I'll call it the like end of the world scenario where we say we're going to ratchet yeah. it up to four. I'm not super keen on that, but that, that I'm might not, help. I'm not keen on it either, but I'm tired yeah. of people coming but, to these meetings and telling us the roads are bad. Yeah. Right. But then they're going to come to the meetings and complain about the taxes. They don't understand it, but we don't have enough money. If there's yeah. enough money, we could do more. Yeah. Yeah. People can see that you discussed it and made yeah. right. the decision. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll throw together the analysis on that at like four mils so that, like, if nothing else, we can say at 2.2, we have $50,000 more. And again, I'm just making up numbers for the sake of stating it on record. Right. Um, versus like 2.0 to 2.2 is this amount. 2.0 to 4 is this amount. Is it really worth hiking up the millage on everybody's properties to only get ourselves an extra hundred thousand dollars a year? Because that's that's not even like a it's quarter of a mile. A yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, it's a hundred thousand. It's a hundred thousand. Well, I mean, it's a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> we don't have now. But is is the the pain of everybody paying that more in taxes worth getting that? Um, because yes, there's stuff we can do with it, but like easy, easy example is we did the oil and chip last pain, year. Is the pain of allowing it to continue to deteriorate where you got Yes, yes, but we have, to, we have to decide what I'm what I'm saying what's, though is what's it worth? Yes. Is but it go on the other side too? You know, we've had a lot of projects here that need accomplished and we don't have any money. Yeah. It, my my point though is and like I said, I don't disagree with you. Right. It, it very well be maybe time for a little bit of an increase, but is that increase on the one side of the scale going to equate to what we need on the other side of the scale? Because like I said, if it's only actually $100,000, yes, it's $100,000, which is a lot of money, but the, the oil and shipping we did last year was 95000 So, I mean, that would, it would pay it was for- It like five miles of road or something. Like that. Yeah, it was like yeah. five miles of road. So- Five miles this year, this year, and five miles yeah. next year, and five miles right. the next but, year, but, but and then we'll get it done eventually. We've, we're taking now, this board has taken on a heavy debt of neglect. You, yes. can't, you can't deny it. And yes. maybe if we set up a better system of planning where we say we have the road plans, we have this, we have all this stuff in place, where it's more like a, a, a cycle that's continued. Rather than but everyone we, just coming in, we got to get. But, but we have, we always have these plans that never get no, done. No, 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 no. And you, it's getting okay, old. Okay, it's getting really okay, old. So we're sitting in these meetings and have the same people every month talking about right. the same crap. Okay, so so, there, so we need more right, money. But there's there's, there's only one right. way to get. There's something I wanted to discuss in in the comments section. The problem is 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 getting the legwork to do the work. Okay, I'm in here ten hours a week at least, coming in taking care of the financials. That is straightened out, and it's kind of on on uh, it's on rails at this point. Yeah, yeah, and 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 so that's been taken care of. But there's still always work to be done. So the day to day operations has to be addressed. There's there's so many issues that come in when I'm just sitting in the office that Sue and I kind of manage when we're both here. God bless Sue. Sue takes care of everything. So the the bigger problem is no one has had a vision for the township to say, this is what needs to get fixed and this is what needs to, this is how we're gonna do it. And so that was gonna be part of my comment section over, let us come up with these plans. Let us put things into perspective. So we had a hydro terror here today. I had no idea that a sewer engineer did not did not go through and have the detailed plans that we need to on the Act 537 plan. The problem is just like you said, there are a lot of problems. We keep on talking about it. So we need to take the steps at every workshop meeting to say, this is this problem. This is what we're going to do. This is the plan. We're going to get so and so involved. We're going to look for grants. We're going to do this. We're going to we're going to carry through that plan. But the problem is, we're all talking, but some of us are doing the legwork and some of us aren't. So that's the problem. I am in here every single week doing work. I'm in here doing all the kinds of. There's only so much that I can handle by myself. So if you if there's a particular issue, if there's a road issue, and that's something I did want to talk about in the comments section. If you don't mind if I introduce please, you here, please. So I've asked Sue. Sue, what do we need to do to get the roads fixed? I have to contact our rep at PennDOT. 
I need Butch to give me a list of the roads. I'm waiting for Butch to give me a list of the roads. Do I have your permission to contact the PennDOT representative? Yeah. Once I contact the PennDOT representative, I'm going to work with him. We're going to have that plan in place. Once I, we know what the plan is, then we could look for grants and get the cost. We have, is it Stiffle was the um, finance guy? Stiffle, we know we could contact for financing. I know we could talk to the bank about financing because they've made that crystal clear. There's the piece has to reach out to also as far as financing and other opportunities. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, if they know of uh, grants for sewer stuff, they may be able to put us into contact with grants for road stuff. I need the um, income study in order to have other kinds of grants looked into. So, so all these things fall into place. But if I have this plan and it's in a folder and all the work is done and it's clear cut over, this is step A, B, C, and D, then we could start to implement those things. Can the I, problem is I need to yeah, work with you guys. Issue. A, B, C, and D, they all cost, they A all cost a little money. bit, A, B right. cost a little bit, right. C cost right. a little bit, but, and we don't have any right. money to do any of them anyway. So now you're just going to talk about it. Doesn't cost like, we're going to talk right. about this building for two years. Okay. It's ready to fall down. So, so, we're going to talk about okay. a sewer project that just doesn't right. even cost because we didn't do it when we no. should. No, in fact, no. it's probably no. quadrupled in cost if they had done it when they were supposed I to. I have spoken to contractors. I still haven't gotten back estimate from the contractor. This has been since May. I have been reaching out to contractors for the past year and a half. I know Once I get that estimate, plus I need the income study to apply for a USDA grant that could cover 70% of the cost of the building. We have to agree that that's something that we want to pursue. If I have more, everything, how much more discussion do we have to have in this building? That then, we all know. You know what, Jim? If you would like, falling right, down. Jim, then go ahead and do the work. Do the work. You have to present to the public what the costs are of, of repairing this building, making the ADA compliant, and then go ahead and do the no, do, you know do the work. This is going to gonna turn into a ghost right. town, and we'll, but, I guess we'll just clear bankruptcy at Jim, some point do, because nothing right. ever gets but, done. But do the work. You nothing want, gets done. Go, go speak to the contractors. Go get an estimate. Hire the right people to get it done. We that are, means spending we some are, money to do it. We are the people. We are the people. There is no other people to do this. It's collecting the information. This is all new territory for me. I've spoken to contractors. We have to speak okay, to people. If you're overworked, people. then get somebody to do it. There are people out there that, are, that we can pay to do it, this. It, it's of course, us. We don't have the money to pay right. them. It's, it's, it's us, Jim. It's, Again. It, it's us doing the work. No, it isn't us. It doesn't have to be us doing all the work. We're, none of us know I know nothing about but the we're, road. Right. I know nothing about it. But that's why I told Penza, and I speak to, to our Penza representative, that's why I need um, Butch to get me the information on which roads need to be repaired. I can put together all this information. Once we have all the information, then we could move forward on financing. The problem is we have the sewer that's a competing interest. We have the roads of competing interest. And then a, a building project. A building project may be a, a, a simple solution as long as we have the income study, we could get yeah. USDA grants. That can be something that is pretty simple to take care of. To yeah. Jim's point, the building. This income study now for a year. Joe Baldaz is here. He's getting the stuff done. He's hired. Yeah. Oh, that, that's like uh, we do a lot of time. Uh, you're saying you're, you're, you're contract, contractors give you a product, buy a lot of them. We need another engineer. Right. We have one, one guy. Yeah, one person that gave yeah. me a response so out of a dozen. So that's, that's where right. you have to go up. Right. Yeah. I can only do what people are willing to help me out with. If you want to come in and help me out, I'm more, I make the phone calls. I call when I'm at my other job. I send emails. I, I, I do all this stuff. I'll put together the packets. I have your permission. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to talk to building people. I'm going to talk to road people. I'm going to push through. These are the steps we need to take. This is the steps that I've already taken. Here's the information. Make a decision. I'll, I'll do it. Uh, I, I've been doing it. So, so, certainly. The answer, the answer, the answer to which roads need done is all of them. We're figuring. Yeah. Do I need to? Do I need to be any more clear than every miles. one of? Them. All right. Yeah. For those who might be on the internet, Dave Stabe, former supervisor, Jim. I understand exactly what you're saying. I understand what you're all facing. Let me begin by saying your funding the taxes. I'm not exactly sure how this works, but I would guess you're looking at the expenditure side. I suggest you also take in comparison the income side. 
I'm not exactly sure, and I would like to find out how much less certain properties, mainly agriculture, have percentage-wise, not dollar-wise, but percentage-wise of the budget have been reduced by going into various programs at a tax benefit to them, which is understandable based on the uh, economics of farming. But if you go back 20 years, I think you'll find a whole different scenario that people were working with. The costs were much less. Before I started on the board, a road would cost $50,000. If I'm not mistaken, a number of farms probably weren't in clean and green or sold off their development rights, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, reduces the amount of local tax. Mm -hmm. I do not know exactly what those percentages are, but I'm saying look at the percentages. Graph that somehow. I'm also going to add that this is not unique to Marion Township. We are unique in the fact that we have no commercial and predominantly agricultural. This is what we have to deal with. We're not like a burn township that has more commercial or South Whitehall Township or Whitehall Township in Allentown that I've noticed. But there are a lot of smaller townships in Lehigh Valley. Their roads are just the same condition as ours. So this is not unique. So if anybody says Marion Township stinks, and all the other townships can get it done, well, they need to go for a Sunday drive. And really, look, I've seen paved macadam roads turn back into gravel roads. And I know because I'm delivering, you know, I, I deliver, I drive tractor trailer through some of these roads to deliver to businesses that are in the boonies. That said, I've tried to push this and it's never taken hold, but this township has a wealth of, talented people it's time to work together it's time to get beyond the controversial issues of the sewer that some people raised or the issues with the roads it's time to say we have a problem you have some engineers in your development i know two of them personally why you can't put together a 10-year plan the reason is Someone else gets on the board, they think they know it all. So we're going to do it this way, and we're not going to let the experienced people who are from out of town because they moved in from New Jersey or New York to uh, Stonecroft, so they're not part of this community. I've always heard this. You know, when I was a supervisor, it's like, well, it's them versus us. Well, forget that baloney. You have a wealth of resources. Get over your prejudices and start working together as a community. And you know what? When you got naysayers or ignorant people in this community, some, not all, there's a lot of people I respect, but there's some ignorant people, you know what? In some fashion, you gotta push them to the side because they're a detriment and a distraction to what you're trying to do. And that's work together in this community and make it function the best as we can under circumstances that are not unique to this township, but are faced at every other township and community and borough in Pennsylvania. Inflation is just a fact of life. I saw it when uh, the 08 recession hit. Our cost of roads went up exponentially. I would suggest, first off, you look at the income source and compare it and say to the people, we had... 20% of our budget could go to roads back then because a mile of road on average costs this much and we got percentage-wise this much. And now we're getting less from income and more for expenses. People will understand that. They may not like it, but they will understand it. And bickering up here, I understand all your points of view. And, and it's all valid. It really is. It's frustrating also. Uh, I myself am concerned about the roads because I'm afraid someday someone's going to go out there with a snowplow and they're going to hit a rough patch of road and start ripping up asphalt. Mm -hmm. uh, that may or may not happen. But I just think that, pardon me? It's inevitable with the condition of some of our roads. But it's, it's, not, it's not unique. 
it's not it's not unique uh but we can work on it another thing i want to throw at you is when i was on the board the engine the, the pen dot rep and psats at their convention said take care of your best roads first it's such a challenge to work on the worst roads because they're the worst but by oil and shipping your best roads you maintain their integrity and uh like I said, I really think you really have to look at professionals, whether they're retired or whether it's a pen dot rep or whether it's an engineer. And when someone comes in here from the community and thinks, well, I know better, just say, yeah, yeah. Off to the side with you, pal. Off to the side. We've heard you. We've heard you for the past 10 years, if not 30 years. My father-in-law's probably heard him too. In fact, I know my father-in-law, my late father-in-law has heard him because they're the same people coming to this meeting, still carrying on like horses patoots so you, if you were here last month we had a, we had people telling us we could just hire a paving guy yeah yeah i'm a, i'm aware of this and this is exactly the kind yeah. of this is the exact I, I realize i, went down I realize road. years ago you could probably hire a paving guy but guess what that's not the way it is now just like it isn't with insurance and workman's comp guess what used to died Get in the yeah. present, get in the game, or retire and shut your mouth. That's what some of these people need to learn because they're not adding anything constructive. The people fighting the sewer didn't add anything really constructive. They had concerns. I get that. But it was handled in a deplorable way. And now you have a home down here, I'm guessing, uh, in Schnitzville that has a problem, that's had a problem. I get that nobody wants to spend money. But we're not living in 1970 anymore. In fact, my father-in-law, my late father-in-law, told me that back in his day, the county county would provide to Marion Township fifteen thousand dollars back in the 70s every year for road funds. They didn't have to put it out to bid; they could just do what they wanted with it. And that's how Forge Road got paved. That was a dirt road but we don't have that luxury now. But what we need to do is start to come up with a, like you said, a game plan, realizing what we have, the liabilities we have, but also the benefits and the constructive things and the foundations that we can build on. You do have people in this community that will serve for the benefit of the community. I'm not gonna point any fingers, that won't put any time or will gladly work for, you know, butch, uh, uh, some compensation, but certainly not the compensation that today's prices are certainly getting and, and be grateful for those people we have, but be grateful and look out for the people who would be glad to help Maybe put maybe some engineers, and if you need names, I'll tell you after the meeting, but you probably know them. They live in your community, I know, I know. highway engineers, and they could probably say, hey, let's take a drive around and assess the roads. They might be more than happy to help. And it, this is what makes a community great are the resources that people are freely willing to offer for the benefit of all. Great. So I hope that it sheds a little bit of light on things, a perspective. But like I said, people don't understand the imbalance now of income versus expenses that communities are facing versus 30 years ago or even 15 years ago. So anyway, that's my piece. Take it or leave it. I appreciate, you. You appreciate, I appreciate it. I really do. Thank you. So Jim, just to circle back to the, the point that you said about the, the longstanding vision. So. We're, we have bits of that together. Like, for example, I went through and cataloged the roads and assigned zones that we can start looking at doing one, it's like two zones every year. And we kind of work through a rotation on, does this need ceiling? Does this need oil and chip? Is this something that we need to chase grants for, for an FDR? We have a lot of those things kind of freestanding, if you will. Um, do we want to maybe put uh, as an agenda item next month as looking at developing, I'll, I'll call it a strategic vision yes. of, Here's, here's the things, we'll just catalog the problems, 
and see where we can try to fit them chronologically. We are always, and I'm going to be blunt about this, always going to have resource commitment issues. We're not never going to have enough money to do everything, to be entirely straightforward, no matter what we do, even if we raise the taxes, the 10 mils, which would create a ghost town, uh, but we still wouldn't even have enough money to, to tackle everything. We have a very large boulder that we have to start trying to roll up a hill. And we've been getting little bits of movement from it. But the problem is there are so many large things. You look at the, the roads themselves as a microcosm. We have four culverts that just within our tenure here on the board have hit a point where they have failed or are actively failing. And that's close to half a million dollars when you when you think about it. Um, we have basically, let's say, 34 miles of road to do that. That's like $72 million if we were to do a full depth on all of that, not that all of it needs it, but it, it is astronomical, the amount of money that we have to do. I agree. And I agree with you that what we need to do now is here's what we're going to do this year. Here's what we're going to do the possibly the year after, yeah. just obviously depending on other things that mm -hmm. happen. Rather, but we just seem to sit here and talk about it, and there's no plan to ever no, do anything. There's, there's, there's planning. There's, there's, there's plans, planning, and so. there's, there's a lot right. of inputs for this. Like, I'll use the building, yeah. for example, because you had said about the building. It really, the, the big decision falls to us on, is this what we're doing? Are we resolute in the fact that we want to try locating another property? We had kind of put a hiatus on that for a little bit based on some of the, the outside things and the lack of contractor input. Um, once we decide that, to your point, there's a lot of things that we can do in-house or enlisting help from the community, but there are certain things we're going to hire out. So if we can get a grant, sorry, um, for like 70% of the building, that's something that we should absolutely we take to, to another firm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We need to start that process. Wait, wait, wait. But even still, so... We already know this building should... Right. When I, I don't care who you bring in. Right. Bring. No, we no. already know and, the building and, is and that's yeah. okay, But we have to demonstrate to the community what the problems are. Because everyone's going to see open their eyes. <laughs> well, 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 that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take pictures of the upstairs and show them that that wall that is pulling away from the building. We have to demonstrate that this building is not salvageable, no matter what the emotional um, attachment is to it. A lot of people went to school here. This has been part of the community. We're not going to demolish the building, but this does not function for us as a community resource. I've already spoken to the bank, and this is based on last year's rates, not current rates. If we were to borrow, flat out borrow a million dollars, it would have been about a $4,500 a month mortgage payment, which covers our $54,000 budget for the building. But when I started looking at grants and loans, USDA loan, USDA grants, excuse me, depending on what our income um, survey shows, we can get up to 70% of that in a grant. I would much rather take seventy percent. We have right the ARPA. Well, then right, let's we, start right. that process. Yeah. Okay. So, so then the next step is, I still need the numbers from the contractor so I can put them up here to demonstrate to everyone. We can. We need to take the pictures of upstairs, which is simple enough to put up on on the the screen, Space. so that we can demonstrate to people what the actual the physical condition is of this building, the money that is going out the window, literally with heating and cooling costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. All that stuff we know, but you still have a responsibility to demonstrate to the public. You are using taxpayers' dollars. This is not my personal money. It's not your personal money. This is taxpayer dollars, and you're committing people to spending this money in taxes every year. So we want to try to find the best, the best fit that works for us, the least amount of financial impact on the township, but as on the taxpayers. So if we're going to go with a project, then let's say we would bump it up next $1.25 million. We get a 70% grant. We sell this building. Let's say the building sells for one fifty. We have $200,000 in our loan sitting in the bank. That's nothing. That is we paid for the building. That's paid for. That, it, this work has already been done. It's just a matter of getting a building design and then finding property to purchase. Right. And that's the route that's right. that process. Right. On on road instead of just coming every month and talking about it, let's start. Okay, that I don't have time to go to builders, but my... I can tell you this: anybody, okay. if anybody comes into this building and says, "Oh yeah, let's let's dump one hundred and fifty thousand into this place and get it," but people good again. walk through this building and see it. Well, the problem is the windows. The windows, the windows right. alone are like a hundred thousand dollars. I don't know right. why you think we need to have somebody come in and tell us what we already know. This building is in bad shape. No, people think this is fine. Everyone lives differently in this country, and that's why I tell my kids all the time. 
people walk through and think that the peeling paint is fine. They think that a, a shower curtain in the men's room is just fine. The people think that this condition is acceptable no. and we should make you know what they said? You push right. those people aside right. and say, you know what? We appreciate your thoughts, but right, this is what's going to happen. And then, and then you don't right. insult them. Just we appreciate your thoughts on that. Thank you very much. Right, Please, but please. but it's hard when it's if people are coming at you and yelling at you and screaming at you at meetings. The other concept with having a new building is also to have it more as a community resource, so that we could potentially generate income by renting out a hall and make it available for the community association to use those grounds also to generate income for their purposes and for the community purposes. I would love to do this. Mm -hmm. I haven't had the time to go to any kind of a builder. And and so, and I'm still waiting for, I'm, I have to reach out to them again. I think monthly I've been calling this guy on the phone one more time because he's the only contractor that came and responded to our inquiry and walked through the building said, and made a, a huge list over what needs to be fixed. You know, I would love to go ahead and say, okay, let's do it, let's go for it. But I still have a responsibility to everyone sitting in those seats and everyone that I see when I drive around this community to make sure I'm making a sound judgment. Well, to, to right. Jim's point, so even if we have a ballpark. Thursday, everybody that's here Thursday, does anybody really think it's a great idea to pour money into this building? So Jim, you at when you ask that question, depending on who's here, you're going to have a lot of people that's that are okay. going to say this. this and those, the people that, those people that just can't see it, push them out of the way. Excuse me? I just... Things. So, right, right, and that's yeah. Right. We, we, yeah. I'm telling you, Dan. Um, if we, if we just continue on the rate that we're going, we're never going to do anything. But which is, which we, appears we, to be what the, the the way that we're going. So I've right. been on this board now for two years. You know what we've done in two years? Colts. What else? Have we, and we don't even have them. There's been a lot of people. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. We either need to look for grants, raise taxes. That's about the only two alternatives. Okay, and so you need people to do that. You need to but we need to get something at the moment. Which they can not not to build a new building. Not for clarity, not to build a new building. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that's, that's largely the roads. The reason that we're looking at the build up is we don't want to make a move. I think, no. I think I can say safely, I speak unilaterally here for the board. We don't want to move the building unless we can get like the 70% loan, the ARPA money. It would be a one to one transition, no out of pocket. Costs. No, it, it, but that's what I'm looking to, for. No impact on the budget. To Jim's point, there's, and to today's point, even as well, we have every year. Prices up to our revenue stream is smaller than the less and less development in the community, so there's less and less building permits. So you have to find a source of revenue somewhere. It's our responsibility to think outside of the box as much as we can and do things like, for example, if we have a building, we can use it and kind of that's not a game changer. You're having hundreds of thousands of dollars. But that's a better source than Happens in my mind because, like I said, when you change the notes, I'll be happy to show you the calculations. All yeah, that you could actually know it, you have to get that much money in your pocket. The only thing you get is the number of that in conjunction with the school tax that has gone way high, and there's concerns around budget cuts as well. It might actually Lacks money coming to the schools, which would result in further increases. And that's something that we have to be uh, mindful of. I think one of the, I think one of the batteries is dying. I think it's that one. Uh, I'm just going to turn that off. Um, I, I think so. I think it's one of the. So, but we have to be mindful of some of the other external factors when we do that because I don't want to see us change somebody's uh, taxes where it goes from $1,000 a year to $4,000 a year. That will break some people. Um, I can't speak for everybody, but I know that would be a hard thing. 
Is there anybody in this community that needs thousand dollars in local well, I'm, I'm just throwing out. But even a thousand dollars more increase, if you yeah. promise them more like right. three hundred. All right, but for for some people, even five hundred dollars is is a deal breaker. I, I I can't I can't do that to people. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well then, and you know what? Then just get ready for the town to fall down and people. You know what? If people want to live with the peeling paint and the bricks falling off their houses. Great. I, do. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to live here and have yeah. to deal. Yeah. So we we serve. So if we that's the way this community is is going. Then maybe I need to get the hell out. I, maybe that's exactly what needs done. Why don't you get somebody else on here that just wants to sit here every month or, and go, or oh, okay, okay. We, what are we going to do next? Oh, we're going to talk about roads again this month? Okay. Okay, so then, then help it's me do the work. Sure. Help me do the work. I don't really see that there's that much work. You get you get a, okay. you get the person in here that, that knows what they're doing and let them let them give you an estimate on whatever you want done. Okay. And finding all the grants and writing the grants and doing well, do we need things. a grant writer? We've been talking okay. about that for a year too. Okay. We don't know how to write grants. That's why we hired them today to make sure that there's that she's on the grant. She knows how to write. Them. We don't. So let's get a grant writer in here. Is it going to cost us a little money? Probably. Unless we find someone like they said, we may have a grant writer in town that we don't even know about that we willing to do it for nothing. To volunteer their time, that they would be a professional that could write the grants that get attention. When we write grants, they don't get anybody's attention. They look at them and go, oh, yeah, well, whatever. Like oh, they yeah. said today, you got to put in the grants something that grabs attention. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll say one last thing, and then for the sake of time, we'll we'll move into comments if there's anything else. But we've had good luck in the past with like DCCD, for example, with the grants. And even recently, that's even dried up. There's so much competition for grants that I don't disagree with you. Having a grant writer is the right thing. We've talked about that before. But even when you have a grant writer, it's not a guarantee. No. But it's a better it's, it's a better, better situation chance. than what we have right now. Agreed. Agreed. I won't disagree with you for a second on that one. Um, so the only – we'll move into comments since I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, so uh, – Gave me the posting, their suggested posting for the assistant secretary. I have a couple of small changes on things. Um, do we actually want to see a cover letter? I'm okay with just a resume rather than a yeah. cover letter. Yeah, I just took a description. Oh, no, no, that's fine. I'm just, I was curious if we actually wanted to see that because, like, a, a resume and two professional references is fine with me. Um, so I'll, I'll send you the, the write up, Sue. But my suggestion is uh, assistant secretary, Marion Township Burks, seeks application for part time assistant secretary. Duties include answering phones, data entry, filing, and typing, Microsoft Office, and data, basic computer knowledge. Uh, uh, computer skills, excuse me, uh, are necessary, 17 per hour, uh, roughly 16 to 20 hours per week. Uh, send resumes and two professional references to Marion Township, 420 Water Street, Stoutford, PA, 19567. Um, I took out the, like, the no benefits thing because, like, if they ask about it, yeah. it's it's part-time, yeah. so that's kind of yeah. that's kind of implied. But I'll I'll type that up, and I'll send that back to you, and I'll, send, I'll put everybody on it so that they Thank can you. see it. But um, once we have that... Um, I can also take that and I'll put it into an actual, like the same thing I do at work with job descriptions, put it into the boilerplate of what it is, what the hourly rate is, basically everything you have here, but in a, uh, like a recruiter format. So this is, this is great for like an advertisement, but then if we have other people who are like, for example, um, if we get a contracting company or an employment agency that reaches out and says, Hey, we want to look for this. I'll have the other format that they usually use ready. So. So the motion that was made was for the secretary to advertise at her discretion. Yeah. yeah. So let me so put it on Indeed. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So when you put it on Indeed, you may still get taps from like let's say I, okay. I drive by it occasionally, but like Mac employment, they may come yep. to you and say, "Hey, we want to we want to help you fill this." Okay. Um. So. Okay. I'll I'll type that up this afternoon and send that over. Yeah, we'll get um, the scanner, then you'll have space. I, yep. Especially with the consumer pressure. thing starting up. I yeah. eat me. Yep. Yeah. And I'll get out of your hair in there too. And then so. I can hopefully get some stuff filed. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's like overwhelming. Yeah. 
Okay. That's it for me, public comment, or not public comment, excuse me, comment wise. Irene, do you have oh, any? Actually, it's a request from you. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the meeting, can yeah. you announce, make sure you include it in your, your if we can put it at the top of the thing to announce that the meeting is being recorded and okay. ask people to turn their cell phones off. We've had a couple of times where cell phones are going on during the meeting. And then the only other request is actually, um, did you have a chance to put the noise ordinance onto I the did. web page? All the ordinances that are on the Google Drive are on the website. Excellent, excellent. I didn't check yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I uh, I took took some time the one night and I did that. Um, okay. I need to go through, Jim. I saw your email. I need to add, because I added like a chunk of like the first like half of the year's meetings to the calendar. I got to go through and add the, the next chunk of it. One yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's a, yeah, you did. It, it's, it's a it's it's a valid criticism. I just got to go through and and put the put the I dates just, in. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I'll I'll devote some time one of these nights soon to to doing that. But I just got to get everything set in and the dates and times and like if we have attachments and yeah. everything else. With the so. um, budget, uh, what was the spreadsheet that I created with all those fees, the fees schedule? Well, that, that needs to be reviewed before we do the budget okay. again, so um, that's a big Excel file. Yeah, do me a favor. Can you send that to me again? Yeah, right. It's, pro it's probably on the it's, computer. It's on right? the computer in there. Yeah. So if okay. you can bump that to the top of my inbox, I would appreciate that. We need to that also to make sure it's covering the cost. And then yeah. if we have the cost of, let's say, craft, then we could compare. If mm -hmm. any of the stuff we're overlaps, make sure we're not. And just as an aside, um. For all the things that we weren't billing out for um, that were being missed for several years, um, for this, it's like roughly 61,000 is what we were charged by the parking engineering. We actually got back a little over $33,000. So that that implementation, that program is working well for us. We're getting reimbursed. But again, as construction slows down, we're just not going to be having, we're not going to have the cost and we're not going to have that much reimbursement. So just about half of what we've been billed out for, the remaining cost is what the township ask the engineer's services for. I think we need to ask the engineer and they're supposed to be bill, billing to the homeowner mm -hmm. to let us know so that we can join them. Well, see, so the we thing do. is they, we, we yeah. get the bill. They, yeah. yeah. It, it, it comes to us kind of as a proxy. Something happened though along the way that we lost. What happened was, again, same thing with like, like what Dave was saying before, everyone seems to be doing it their own way. So instead of having this is a standard operating procedure. Everyone says, well, let me do it this way, or I know better. It, it should have always been built out to, to the, mm -hmm. the customer, essentially. Um, but that uh, kind of got but lost. But we had a treasurer who quit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was nothing written down on how to do her job. Right. Yeah. And nothing. If I, right. if I can say one thing here, just going back to your, like, yes, we do talk a lot. Like, believe me, I, I recognize right. that. But there's a lot of things just in the past two years, in you being on the board, even, where we've gotten a lot of stuff accomplished behind the scenes. We yep. now have the finances cleaned oh, up. We have- Yeah, Irene's done a phenomenal job. No, 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 yeah, no, no, well, I mean, it's not, it's not even just Irene. Yeah. Irene has done a phenomenal job, that. but there's there's a lot of stuff that the, the, the change- the, 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 the change in regime- There's so many right. things that are falling through the cracks. It's starting to get very frustrating. Well, I wouldn't even say they're falling through the cracks. Like, for example, like the, the culverts. The reason the culverts took so long is like the GP11 permits take months. Wow. Like, they take six or seven months to get them back from the state. And like, we keep it on the agendas and we talk about it because we want to make sure that it doesn't fall through the cracks. My, my premise, and this is what I said to Sue many, 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 many moons ago, like after Peter Wallace left, is I don't want things to be taken off the agenda until they're done that's the same reason we have the the tpd thing with the stop sign yep it's on here one last month so that we can close it out and then it falls off and then it's going to be done yeah so that's that's my methodology is it stays on the agenda until it's done and it, it yep. may seem like we're beating a dead horse over and over again but it is exactly right. for that same reason so that we do not lose sight of it that it's not like oh yeah i guess we did start that that culvert thing yep. a while ago and we just didn't talk about it. i don't want to see that happen when you only have a meeting once, once a month. month yeah make decisions e exactly but there's there's a lot of things that i mean we have the workshop as well but um my my point though is there's a lot of things that have have happened under the hood that are requisite for not just the tactical the short-term well-being of the community but will feed into the strategic the five-year or the 10-year vision for roads or the building public sewer 
talk, we were talking about water earlier, which would be a separate project. All of those things need to have a solid foundation of consistency, which we now have that we didn't before with documentation around how to do the finances, how to do some of the red tape filing things, having the bank account set up a different way, having the credit card, um, having the, the technological means to be able to interact with. Yes, yeah, yes, we are. yes every month. We are. Yes. Everything's um, done. It's the, a lot nicer. The Zoom thing is still online, which will yeah. transition over. Yeah. But we we have started getting things on to that. So we have we have processes, we have procedures, we have mechanisms now that lend themselves to consistency and less cowboyish tactics of this is the way I'm doing it when somebody comes in on the board. So yes, it, I, I understand your frustration. I recognize your frustration, but we, we have to recognize that yes, some things that we do aren't necessarily tangible, but they're necessary. And there are a lot of things that do actually take time and we have to do them within the resources that we have. And that means, for example, us on the board, not getting paid. It's just, it's just things like this building. Obviously we can't get a contract with you and you didn't do any of the floors. That's yeah. obvious. Well, does it come down to the point that you just have to contract somebody to come in and go through the whole building and say, here's the list of everything that I just found that needs done and I'm qualified to do so. Well, I'm going to have to charge you a thousand dollars to right. come in and do it. Yeah. But yeah. okay, at least it's done. See, the, but, if we're going to wait for contractors, right. that's, but that's we don't even know that's, that's, that's yeah. and, and if I may, uh, we we have a lot of decision making power, but at the end of the day, we have to decide what's right. Yes, but we also have to take into consideration the the the, the opinion and the voices of the community because at the end of the day we we serve at the discretion of the, the constituents. So if whether I mean unless it comes down to like the brass tax of like it's going to cost us twice the, the amount of money to stay here and renovate than it would be to build a new place. Yeah, you can run counter to public opinion, but you have to have the 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 metric, the data point to be able to say yes, everybody. We hear you. Your voice is being heard. We know there's a, a set, strong sentiment to do this, but we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. We cannot continue to do this because we can't in good conscience on the board say, yes, we know everybody loves the building. They've got a strong sentimental attachment to it because it was the school that they went to. But we can't have that kind of fiscal expenditure because of just, just it, show them the heating and air conditioning. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, we're heating, we're heating and we, air we have to, one room in this room twice a month. Yeah. And our bill is ridiculous. Yeah, bill was seven hundred eighty Yeah, yeah. And, and again, I, I don't disagree with you I mean, on that, but we have crazy. to be we have to be careful because yes, there are going to be times where we have to say, "Look, I hear you, but it's not the right thing to do." We're 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 being the parent I mean, here. If we have to, and, if we if we can't get people to understand what we already know, that look, the windows are going to cost a fortune. Everything else is falling down. The front of the mm -hmm. building or the back of the building is falling off. Yeah. Well, then maybe we have to get somebody to come in and we pay them to tell us what we already know. But at least we now have ammunition that we can go to the to well, the my... public and say, "Look, we had a guy come in. We had to pay him because nobody there. wanted to listen yeah. to our listen listen to it. Yeah. We had to pay him to do this, but here's what he came yeah. up with. It's going to cost us five hundred thousand dollars. I'm maybe yeah, 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 yeah. But it's going to cost us one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to redo this building. Do you really want to put one hundred and fifty thousand dollars into this building? Yeah. I think a lot of people. There'll still be a few. Yeah. Like Dave said, there's always a few. There'll be a few yeah. that are they're going to say, "Well, you know, we love this place." Like we've had people come in and tell us we can't take the blackboards. Yeah. I mean, that's just, to me, that's insane. But don't, don't, don't yeah. we, if we have to pay somebody, let them, let them do it. Don't we have enough votes uh, that, uh, that what people told us already about this building, uh, what it's going to cost? So we have that anecdotally. Very few of them have actually given us a quote other than when Mike's gave us a quote for these windows, and it was like $64,000 just for these windows. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm in favor of going ahead as as the gym, you know, going ahead and just go buy some land. I'm for what it's worth, personal opinion, I agree with you. I think it's the smart move. And I'm also gonna say broad stroke statement, regardless of what it is. My opinion lies with whatever the best interest for the township is. And this is like the sewer, I'm not fond of the sewer. But at the end of the day, if we look at it and go, look, there's going to be so many people that are going to have expensive holding tanks that they have to pump out all the time. 
it really comes down to the question of, okay, how do we make it work then? How do we make a, a large public works project affordable? Or how do we how do we have a plan in place? And this is what I was saying before with the revising the plan is, okay, how do we build that out to get from point A to point B, whether point B is 2025 20, or 2035 or whatever, how do we manage in the time being? How do we get ourselves there? Because we don't know when we're gonna get there. It could be tomorrow, it could be eight, 10 years from now. Um, but, but, we, but at least now we have a solid plan to train. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Had I'm, this been done 30 years ago, yeah. it would have been a fraction of the well, cost. Well, yeah, now. yeah. Uh, and I, we just found out in two years, years. Yeah. it doubled. What's I mean, it gonna do in two more? If they had done this back in like the, the 80s, it would have been probably entirely paid for. It would have been 100% grant funded. But uh, there, there's no point in crying over spilt milk. The only yeah. thing we can do is exactly what we're doing right now, which is um, we have the, the letter that I need you guys to look at about sending back to DEP so that we keep on good terms with them. We brought in the right staff and professionals, and I, I've had extensive yes, conversations with Joe. Done that. Yeah, we've done that though two years ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, now we're now we're waiting. Now it's going to take him a long time to put this whole thing together. What's no, it going to cost? No, it's going to cost a, long time. a couple of years. It might be it might be fifteen mm -hmm. million next year. I mean, this is what he does for a living. Yeah, this the computer. We're we should have hired him yeah. two years ago, and we. Got the project no, on the five. Plan two years ago, but anyway. Yeah, and so that's well. The, the bottom line is, can, can if yes, this, yeah, 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 yeah. Instead so of talking and talking and talking. If if there are things, I'll, what I'll leave on that, and then Jim, if you have any further comments, I'll turn it over to you. Is if okay. if there okay, and say if there are things that are particularly pressing in the front of your mind that you want to have attention to, make a bullet point list. Let's let's start trying well, to figure I may out. Just where call they fit. Mike and ask Mike. Hey, Mike, would you volunteer to come in here? And go through this building and give us an estimate. Well, it's not, it's not even a volunteer. They'll come out and give you a free estimate. The problem is getting them out here to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call. Yeah. And see if, of course, he may say, you yeah, know, you'll make me do that. I got it whenever you have to present this. Yeah. But there's got to be somebody out there that we can get in here. And again, <clears throat> even if we have to pay them $1,000, maybe it's worth it. Come through this building and go, you know what? That needs fixed. That needs fixed. These windows are 60 some thousand. The one will be 100. You go up the stairs. The, the yeah. building is falling off. off. Yeah, like, the like stairs are peeling up and, and the plaster is falling off the wall. On, on the subject of the building, like I said, I wholeheartedly agree with you in the sense that it would be completely infeasible to get ADA access to the second floor. You either need a chairlift mm -hmm. or an elevator. That itself is like $300,000. Yeah. It's, it's an over. So that's what I'm, what I'm trying to get across is we already know that this yeah. is, that this is a money. Thing. So, I, so I, let's, let's look for some property. Let's yeah. get somebody to give us some ideas on, on a whole yeah. building or whatever mm -hmm. we can put up. That's the least expensive mm -hmm. and let's get some grants. Stuff. I, I think, I think you guys are, are a grant you know, we're sitting here just, just down month, month per month, and nothing's getting done. Well, like, we have, yes, we, can, some, we can see. Uh, in here, you're right. So, can you do me a favor? When you talk to Kim tomorrow, can you see if she does grant writing for anything outside of like wastewater stuff, too? Because if she does, yes. we already have a grant writer that we can. And I'm sure that her name is so some hard. other thing. I, I, I had a grant writer for me when I was in Western Pennsylvania. And she always told me. A lot of times, it just depends on whose name was on that grant that wrote it. Yeah. Because they go, oh, yeah, Don, he's the, he is. He's, we've done some projects with him in the past. He really knows what he's talking about. Let's give him the grant. Yeah. Opposed to, oh, who's this other guy? Brooks. I never even heard of that chick. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to give him any money, even though this looks like a pretty good grant, but I don't know. Well, I, I, I want to go into a I have no I idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just saying, I, I don't think it's as common as you or think, but they might. Paying somebody yeah. Okay. You're, you're okay. Okay. yeah. So, anyway, right. let's, I'll, let's I'll make. Sue, do you have any comments? <laughs> no. Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. So moved. They're seconded. Aye. Yes. Okay. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Sit.